Alrighty, hey everyone, hope you guys are all having a great day today. It is Sunday. I haven't done a Sunday stream in I don't know how long. Usually it's my day off um, where I take Loki out and go playing and stuff like that. But today it was just a haircut and I napped all day. It was a pretty good day. So I say hello. Loki says hello if he wants to jump up here. I think he's trying to find a toy just to... Uh, you want to find a toy? Okay, well... This is the toy he really wants to play with for whatever reason. You can come up here. You can get it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Good boy. All right. But he says hello to everybody. Um, <clears throat> this will probably be a longer stream I'm thinking here today. Um, probably at least a couple hours just kind of going over what Bitcoin's looking for and stuff like that. We talked a little bit about this type of stuff, I would say, back on Friday. And today, I think we saw a little bit of weakness coming from Bitcoin, but I wouldn't say it's like a lot. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people complaining like, uh oh, should I sell Bitcoin? Should I sell Bitcoin? Should I sell Bitcoin? That type of stuff. Um, and usually when it comes to these types of situations, the way I'm thinking about all this Bitcoin cryptocurrency stuff at this point in time is, and, and I'll, and I'll open up the chart here in a second, but when you're zooming out on Bitcoin, it's still in a very good trend. Even if we took a, what, like a 20 or 30% drop over the next few months, like which I don't think is likely, but we took a, a really big drop, it would still be opportunities just to buy more and more and more. If you wanted to short, that's a different thing. And even right now, the shorting situation is just kind of in a weird spot here. Um, <clears throat> but definitely, 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 you know, manage your expectations until something actually starts to work in our favor or against us. All I've been seeing the last few days is Bitcoin doing a whole lot of nothing, which has just been very, very boring. Now we got a little bit of activity, but I wouldn't say it's enough activity to really get people excited. The one thing that's been happening here is I think we've seen a little bit more weakness as far as altcoins are concerned. And that's where things are probably going to get a little bit more intriguing. Uh, they would suggest that Bitcoin wants to continue coming down. But of course, if Bitcoin can just hold, all of those altcoins will bounce back with like 5 to 10% a day. So it really is a tug of war at this point. Um, I have a chart right in front of me, but I think you guys can see right here. Um, I got eight charts looking right here. Uh, the top four are all Bitcoin charts. The top four on the bottom are all um, Ethereum charts. And I've been kind of keeping track of them all throughout the day whenever I've been down here to sit down. I'm just kind of trying to see what's exactly going on here. And, you know, when I look at Bitcoin, when I look at Ethereum, they're both at support levels here. There's no real crazy danger. What you're seeing happening is what we talked about this morning when I put up that video when I was taking Loki outside to uh, use the bathroom and just, you know, have a little outdoor playtime. You're seeing all of that momentum that we had from those past few days where we had that nice, really good reversal popping up. You're seeing all that momentum clearly just die out. And now it leaves everybody wondering what next. And when people really don't know and having a little bit of uncertainty, that's where things start to falter. That's where the price typically starts to come back down. Um, now, you know, let's hop into the charts here, but before that, hey Stan, happy to see you back. Brainwaves, Wilder Studios, Crypto, Ricky, Oban, Khan, Obaid Khan, sorry for messing up your name, and Time Alone, hope you guys are all doing well. And hey Brainwaves, yeah, I got a haircut today, I'm now bald again. Um, I enjoy being bald, it's just a much easier lifestyle because I wake up, I get all of Loki's hair off of my head, and then I pretty much just take a shower, scrub my scalp, uh, put some coconut oil on top of it, make sure it doesn't dry out, you know? And then yeah, I'm good to go for the day. Uh, the only thing that really sucks is uh, <laughs> I got I got a uh, special uh, shampoo for my beard. I think I got it from a place called Lush, but it, it's it's nice. My beard smells like uh, tropical flowers and stuff. It's a it's a good vibe. <laughs> Loki likes it too. All right. Um, and Khan, uh, the technicals would suggest that would suggest that Bitcoin's ready to come down, but this has been the slowest move yet, so it might not just come right away. Uh, we were expecting it to go down a few weeks ago, and what happened? We had the re great reversal, bouncing up, and now we're kind of going back into a bit more of a bearish mood. But still, if there's some momentum here or some news, Bitcoin can clearly go back up. Right now, as I look forward for the next month, I would expect us to be lower at the end of the month than we are right now. That's the best way I could put it. Um, because if you're looking at these charts right here, you're going to see this 20-day moving average right here, or excuse me, a 20-week moving average. I think we're going to break down below that. It's just kind of hard to figure out exactly when, 
because once we start breaking down below that, you're going to see a little bit more volatility, probably bringing us back down to like 37,000, 36,000, maybe something like that. Honestly, by the time we get down there, I feel like it's just going to be more of a 50 day moving average type of support level. And then we'll kind of see what happens next. But yeah, I, I would expect us to be going more bearish here over the next few weeks for sure. It's just yeah, it, going back to that boring thing. Bitcoin's been having a little bit of fun up and down, but we really haven't done anything for quite a bit of time here. That's not a horrible thing. It's just something that, you know, it, 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 that, that, that loss of volatility, it really um, makes the potential for gains in the market very slim. And so it's really up to those scalpers that like to trade with large amounts of money and large leverage. They're the ones really making money during this environment, kind of trading the ranges that we've been seeing. But besides that, there really hasn't been too many opportunities as far as Bitcoin's been concerned uh, to make money day trading it. Altcoins, there's been some opportunities here. Some have been popping off. Some have been breaking back down. Those are what you're looking at. And we've talked about those actually at length on Friday. But it's not always going to be that easy. And you see right here as I kind of squeeze all this stuff over here, or not squeeze, but just kind of show it to you. The RSI is negative on the weekly chart. That's bearish. You got right over here, the stochastic is definitely bearish right there. And then you got the MACD, still not bearish. Every single week we've gotten closer and closer to closer. And this would be the week, I guess, that we eventually come back down. But as far as we're concerned, this 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 um, histogram right here, it's still fluctuating based off of the price action that we see this week. And even if you wanted to go over here and forget the uh, histogram and just go over to where the crossover is happening, it's going to happen. But man, if this is not the slowest, you know, breakdown you ever did see, uh, it, it's becoming very boring to kind of keep track of all this stuff. Now, let me go back over here. Let me just shrink this stuff down a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And I think we'll be fine there for now. And let's just kind of do a recap of what's going on with a lot of other altcoins. Guys, right now, Bitcoin feels like it just wants to come down a little bit. I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to come all the way back down to what we saw a few weeks ago, right down here, like around 38,000. It just feels like we want to come back down to retest the waters kind of around this old support level, kind of around 40,500. And then from there, we might have a chance to bounce up and then try to continue this range going on. Uh, we do have the lower low here, but, you know, hopefully there's a way to fix it. Um, because again, if we're not looking to break down below the 20 week moving average this week, I would hope so. That'd be a very violent move down and that's typically not what we want to see. We want to see those gradual moves down so we can kind of buy up stuff as a you know, dollar cost average buy and stuff, not buying all at once because uh, if you buy buying all at once, sometimes it just keeps on <laughs> going down. But uh, anyway, you got Ethereum over here, still looking pretty sideways. Not much has changed. Everything's still pretty much bearish here except for the MACD, just like Bitcoin. A whole bunch of nothing though. Uh, I wish there was better news on Ethereum because everybody was really hyping this up, I think, a few weeks ago back over here. Uh, I was probably one of the only influencers out there talking about how it didn't look that great to me just because of what Bitcoin was going through. Uh, I hate being right about this small type of stuff, but at the far, as far as I'm concerned here, that death cross finally did show up. Ethereum is probably going to want to test out some support over here, and then hopefully, if we're lucky, we're going to have a little bit more of a bounce coming up. Um, that bounce, it's it's possible here because it, you see Ethereum has a really strong level of support. It's just that will Bitcoin find a way to hold itself? Because if Bitcoin doesn't, none of this stuff matters here as uh, painful as that is. You got stuff like ADA. This one's doing a little bit better than most. Uh, and I say that just because it's not actually hovering around these lows. You see a lot of altcoins are now hovering around the lows that we've experienced over the past few weeks. And that means they're looking for new 2024 lows, basically. And, you know even if ADA flushes, you know, it comes down from 49 cents down to 45 cents, something like that. It, hopefully it's not breaking down and making a new low here. And we're finding some support that'll give us a little bit more of a move. But you are seeing that the, there, a lot of these altcoins are still bullish on the daily charts. It's the weekly charts where they're all starting to get a little more bearish too, just like the, the rest of the market here. Dogecoin right here. It's it's not hovering right at the level of support down here, but from the body of the candles, you can see it's hovering there. Amp, this is its own thing, so it's a very small market cap, but this thing can fluctuate quite a bit, so be careful of this one. Ape token, not at the bottoms, but you can see it's hovering around this order block. Arbitrum, order block duty, looking at that death cross here. AXS, holding the order block, trying not to fall down anymore, but also kind of at that support level here. BNB. Trying not to break down below the 50. So you, you're seeing a lot of these altcoins at uh, strong levels of support. We're just hoping that these levels of support can kind of guide us a little bit. 
you can see right here this is bonk bonk is at a major support level if we start flushing below all this I mean this thing can come down hard and fast it'll probably have a good rally return you know months from now but not many people are probably going to be able to hold throughout the carnage if again Bitcoin does start to reverse here because some altcoins had their big pops and they haven't been able to stand the test of time here almost going through their own little uh, mini Bitcoin uh, mini altcoin rallies here uh, so you know a lot of other charts out there pretty similar even comp managed to break out here it was good for a little bit hit the first level of resistance and then I got slammed back down it was actually pretty sad I was pretty uh, disappointed in this one because there wasn't many things actually breaking out and you can see why broke out Look at that. it had a little bit of a surge here and then just whoop, died off change of character bearish move started coming in and they just never held up nothing seems to be falling off of a cliff right now which is kind of nice a lot of stuff seems to be down to a half a percent or a percent I think we can kind of live with that comp is down a little bit Chili's is down a little bit uh, bonk is down a little bit but you know overall we're we're not in really crash territory what you're seeing with Bitcoin primarily on this one hour chart is basically us heading back down to the support level down here around 42,000 it's not the prettiest chart in the short term but you're seeing all of a sudden death cross in the one hour death cross on the one hour between the 2050 and the 200s here last time we had that of course it was not the best of times um, again even if we do continue this breakdown here and we come down over time you know, I don't necessarily think it's as bearish just because we do have the support right here. My big thing is, hey, if we do end up breaking down, coming back down to 40,000, 41,000, whatever, we want to see in hindsight after that, that, hey, now we have a higher low and we can continue moving on after that point. Because again, the overall economy is still in a good spot. There's not really too much of a reason for Bitcoin to be crumbling and crashing here besides what we talked about. Um, what the fuck was that? Oh magic. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I meant to do the eraser. Uh magic is a new button. I have not seen that before. But th there you go. M magic. Uh I mean there's tons of little shit emojis in there. That's all, that's all my eyes are going towards. Oh what well, whatever. Sorry, I'm easily entertained and that was <laughs> that was entertaining. But uh anyway. Um we're just trying to make some higher lows from here and see where they can go. Again, the problem is those weekly charts are just getting more and more bearish week by week, and that's kind of just been uh, an, an overarching theme of my analysis here, which makes me seem so bearish, but I want you guys just to understand, as bearish as I am for the next few weeks, it's not that I'm like, oh my God, sell all of your crypto. It's more of like, oh goody, we'll have some better opportunities to load up on our altcoins. And especially right now, altcoins are getting some really good discounts right now. I'm hoping we'll get more discounts over the next few weeks. Uh, and also I will be smoking a cigar right now. I've had a long day a lot of errands running a little bit of time with Loki, of course um, And so I'll be smoking one up here pretty soon uh, I'm gonna enjoy this one. This is the one I was gonna smoke on Friday after the other one But I you know ended the stream after two hours. I was tired. So we'll go to that one in a little bit to me Have I tried shaving my head myself? Yeah, um, typically I have like an electric electronic razor that does it pretty well. And typically I don't have to go in and get my hair uh, shaved manually. But basically uh, if I forget for a couple of days to shave my head, then I just kind of give up and I'm just like, okay, I'll just go get let this lady do it for me. She's really nice. Um, and then she also trims up my beard, which is nice. Um, like I have all the tools to do it all myself. It's just a tediousness to it. And the making sure that the back of my head is also well done, it, it, it becomes very annoying. <laughs> so I try not to do it, but I have like the electronic razors and stuff like that to make sure when I do want to do it, it's as easy as possible. But it, definitely there are just times where I'm working so much and I'm just like, oh, I forgot to do my hair today. Oh, I forgot, you know, uh, and it, it sucks. But uh, yeah, I do. I do got some stuff for it. It's pretty it's it's not bad, but it, I, electronic is easier than, you know, just, you know, straight razing on there. And hey, I'm very happy to see you, man. Hey, Carl, uh, I'm doing well. Thank you. Busy day, but it's good. Loki's taking a nap after a very, very long day. He's been um, enjoying a lot of free treats and stuff like that. And um, he's been doing okay. I've been still watching his on poop duty for him since he ate that stuff. Uh, you wanted to ask about Cardano? We talked about it for a few seconds here. There we go. 
So as far as the weekly chart's concerned, it actually did fall down below that order block, and now I would say the order block has kind of turned back into a small level of resistance. You're seeing it come up and play around, or you're seeing the 20 week moving average come up and play a role here. Um, unlike Bitcoin, this doesn't necessarily mean that a devastating move is coming, but usually you see a little bit of volatility. I won't say, well, let me just go back. Yeah, see a little bit of volatility there, but you know, right, that's okay, that's some volatility. You see the few weeks before that, not really much volatility going on, not much volatility right here. Not much volatility right here, right? Um, so you would expect this probably if Bitcoin keeps on going the way it is, probably to start coming back down here towards 41 cents. That's a pretty drastic drop if you think about it coming from 49. The daily chart is I think where things start looking a little bit more bearish here. The weekly chart, zoom out for a second, it's about to turn bearish. The daily chart, however, is also about to turn bearish. A lot of other altcoins have bullish charts and getting bearish weekly charts. So you're kind of seeing this weird tug of war. This one has been coming down for a while now, making these lower highs, kind of giving the weekly charts more of a of a perception of just, you know, bearish, bearish, bearish incoming. That next order block that you have all the way down here is really close to 37 cents, which is like drastically lower than 50 cents. That's a drop of probably uh, <laughs> about 23%. Um, my big concern here is because we did have such a large uh, breakout here over the last few weeks, which is absolutely great. You're going to see it like most altcoins. If they have a really good pop, they're going to have somewhat more of a drastic drop. And by that, I just say, hey, look at the highs we experienced a couple weeks ago. Look to the lows. They went down a couple weeks ago. It went down 33, 34%. You're probably going to see it continue to come down bit by bit. And you're probably going to see this have a, a death cross coming up, which is kind of weird because of how fast this popped up. When you're looking at the 200, it just means you're looking at the past 200 candles. Since we're looking at the simple moving averages, there's not going to be any weight attached to the more recent candles, like an EMA or a team or something like that. But last 200 candles, 200, 200. There we go. So right now we're replace we're, we're we are replacing candles that are 39 or that are th that were 30 cents and replacing them with a value that's about 49 cents. This 50 up here or this um. This 200 up here is going to continue to move higher and higher and higher. That's hopefully going to be a little bit of a level of support so we don't actually have to come into contact right here when it comes to this order block. One other thing I would notice, uh, tell you right now, if I were to change this change of character right here or this Luxago indicator to colored candles, you are going to see this is all red right now. Sell sign right here and it's been making these lower lows ever since. Hopefully we can get something in here that will make it a little bit more positive, a little bit more green um to get people a little bit more excited about buying into this but right now it definitely looks like we want to come down a little bit lower hopefully that lower move doesn't cause us to make a new lower low but in fact we can stabilize just long enough to actually see it come back up and start retesting these highs up here around 66 cents it's going to be a tough one for ada right now uh mostly just because it already had such a great pop um usually when you, you know when you see moves like this look at this all within one day, you see ADA popping up around 26%. When you have those types of rallies, of course, it's going to be crashing down a little bit more than normal. There are other altcoins that have not come down nearly as much as ADA, but they never went up as high in the first place. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I like taking the highs with the lows because I can short them up high. Uh, I can, excuse me, buy them up low, uh, sell them high, and then, of course, short at a very high price and let the market kind of do what it needs to do. Um, right now, I'm much more inclined to go on bearish shorts on Bitcoin, but the way Bitcoin's been going, the stop loss has to be much higher. And unfortunately, you know, you kind of have to just wait for it because the move isn't happening, happening at a, at a pretty decent rate. It's been a pretty slow rate so far. Just look at ever since Bitcoin started turning bearish. Sure. We had a few days of going down when we had all these bearish signs coming up, whether it's this change of character right here, a breaking it below that negative, 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 or, you know, sell, 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 whatever you want to call it. We did go down, don't get me wrong, that downward move was about 9%. You know, when I look back on it, perhaps I was just a little bit too greedy, but I was really hoping we would come down to 37 and a half, 36,000, 37,000. That's where I was looking to short. So what ended up happening is because uh, I ended up moving my stop loss down basically bit by bit, you know, I hardly got any profit. I got profit from like here to here because the time it came back up, you know, my stop loss is hit. So you can make a little bit of money. Uh, and in fact, on most of my positions, I ended up losing some because I was trying to short some more down here, like double down into my short because I was getting really aggressive with it. And poof, all went away. So 
you know, we're getting there. It's just the path that we're taking there is shaking everybody out. So if you're a short, you're getting shaken out. If you're a bull, you're getting shaken out. And when you have those types of environments, you just kind of sit back on your butt and you're just like, okay, let's just kind of see where it goes. It's going to be a longer term short or a longer term long. Those are your options right now, especially when it comes to altcoins, because those altcoins are going to be shaking you out a lot more. Just look at the Bitcoin 15 minute chart right here. Okay. There was a little bit of volatility right here, right? A little bit of a pop. But go over here to the Ethereum chart. Just look at how it was shaking everybody out. Because if you did any shorts right here, this obviously would have been your stop loss. And it just shook them all out. You know, you saw some people probably hop in here or some people realistically just opening up shorts again. And then poof, we came all the way back down. But, you know, if you do the change of character, you saw some buy signals maybe on the 15 minute chart, which is kind of hard because the hour or the four hours is all kind of nasty. Um, but if you did take that, <laughs> that chance, you just got drilled again. So these shakeout moments are just hitting all of those stop losses and it's not making it a uh, necessarily a good time for traders out there, which, you know, again, really, 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 really sucks. When trading isn't simple, it's usually a good idea to uh, be patient. I hope we keep these low prices on altcoins or go down harder waiting for tax money thrown. Um, I mean, right now, altcoins are giving you some good discounts, but I would expect them to probably continue to come down lower. The one thing that can save Bitcoin right now, which is, again, not likely, is a sudden boom from the whales to get everybody jolted back up. How often do you really expect whales to come in here and save the day, uh, especially when there's not much of a catalyst as far as news is concerned right now? Nobody's really talking about the spot Bitcoin ETFs beyond, like, you know, just checking their volume, checking the rates and stuff like that. They had some good numbers. I'm really happy about it, but it doesn't seem to be enough to keep Bitcoin, you know, still uh, going strong here. When I sponsored by Manscaped at one point, I still have their razors upstairs. Yeah, I, I was sponsored by Manscaped back in 2021. I did not like working with them. I'll tell you that now. Um, I, they, they sponsored my channel. Oh, got razor burn on the back of my neck. Um, I need to put some uh, oil on it or something. Um, they sponsored me. And I think it was some name, some guy named Kyle or something. I forget. Um, they sponsored me. I was supposed to refer you guys to a link in the description, which I did. And then they would know if people signed up and bought the product and stuff like that. But what happened was they did all of these campaigns on the same day, right? And their affiliate software couldn't handle everything. So it had no idea if I was bought, if you guys bought something using my link or from somebody else's link, if that makes sense. And so... I was like, okay, well, that's not my fault. You still need to pay. They it took them three months to pay me. So I just will never work with Manscaped again. Uh, that guy, Kyle, psh, I had to threaten legal action before they paid me. It was freaking a hassle. And I was already stressed out back then because remember, I was just getting into YouTube. I knew how to trade. Trading was my thing, but becoming a YouTuber who talks about trading, a totally different thing. Most YouTubers don't trade. Um, they're good at being entertaining. They can do a little bit of technical analysis, but as far as trading, they, they just aren't there, right? Um, and I think the best way for uh, influencers that want to get into crypto and they want to do it, just do like the swings, do weekly swings and just show, oh yeah, I bought low, sold high. That type of stuff works great. But, um, you know, it, it, Manscaped, never again, never again. But I do appreciate that they gave me some free products. But yeah, never again. That Kyle guy, fucking asshole. And hey, crypto, when's my next trip to Vegas? I am not entirely sure right now because remember, I have to have somebody watch my dog because I don't put them in the kennels. My sister's coming back in March. I was thinking of going to Vegas during March, but, uh, you know, it's spring break. So I thought, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be better if I took my sister and Loki out to the beach? Like this Washington, we have like the Puget sandwiches in the middle. So we never have the need to go to the beach. I'm going to rent a house out on the beach for us. And we're going to chill there for three days. Um, and then maybe I'll go to Vegas after that. I'm not entirely sure. If not, then it'll probably be somewhere in June or July. Once she's like right out of college, I'll be like flying out the, <laughs> the next day after I say hi to her. Um, so it's probably anywhere between March and June, I would say. I was planning on going on December again, but I think I'm going to be going down to Panama for a week, like a Monday to Sunday trip. And I'm going to be looking at apartments down over there, kind of looking at the, the walking around the town, looking at the different neighborhoods and stuff like that and seeing how I like it. I've been finding a few a few apartments over there that are really cheap. I'm not entirely sure if I want to go furnished or unfurnished, but they're they're really cheap. Uh, well, cheap by American standards. They're still like over a thousand bucks. But um, 
I'm going to go over there. I'm going to get myself a few tours, talk to a few real estate agents, kind of just learn the lay of the land, like, you know, rental estate agents, whatever you want to call them. Um, so it'll be pretty, it'll be pretty, pretty fun. Uh, I'm going to be flying first class over there because I don't want to sit in those tiny seats being a big guy. Uh, so <laughs> I got a lot of planning to do this week, uh, this month or this year. And I want to see my friend Tyler out in Philadelphia. So I'm probably gonna go over to Philadelphia once or twice, um, and say hi to him. Besides that, I think I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to go. If my sister doesn't have an internship this summer, where she's gonna be gone for most of it, I'll probably go to Vegas, like July, Jan, uh, July August, September. <laughs> to be frank, uh, even if it's really hot, I'll be going all the time, so I can get all the the traveling out of my system. And in general, knowing my luck will pump through. You know, it's it's been interesting for sure. The good thing we got going on for us right now is everything right now in the four hour chart is negative. As we're kind of going through this weird four hour moving average fluffle, I don't know the exact word to say for it, but you see what's happening here? We had this golden cross here, nothing happened. We had this death cross here, not really much has happened. Had another golden cross right there between the 20 and the 200. And now we're gonna have another one. We're gonna have a golden cross here between the 50 and the 200. And then we're gonna have a death cross between the 20, the 50, and the 200 cross back over. So it's a it's a freaking nightmare right now. Uh, it just looks so weird. Now the overall momentum is clearly showing us going down. You can see these lower highs over here. You can see the momentum building down on the uh, uh, building up on the downward side. But we still got this support level here. So if we manage to hold this like 41,600 uh, level, I think we're fine. But if we start well, even right here, we probably want to make a higher low. If we start breaking down below 41,882 or 41,900, that's when you know we're looking for a shorter flush or we're looking for a flush that may take us back down to 41,000 or maybe uh, 40,500. 40, as far as these lows we experienced last week or a few weeks ago, I, I don't know if we're breaking down below them right now. Uh, because again, I was pretty... You know, I was pretty confident that we were going to be bearish right over here. I was like, oh, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. But I wanted it to keep on going. There are still active buyers in this market that are going to try to keep, pump this sucker back up. And, th and that's why I told you I had to move my, I was moving my stop loss down bit by bit just to be safe. But, you know, even if I walked away with money, I was still pretty upset that my overall um, plan, you know, it, it, it didn't actually go to fruition. I was wait, waiting for this sucker to continue going down, down, down. And then we were going to have a sharp drop. A little bit of a, a bounce, then we're going to consolidate and then try to move on. Now it looks like if we go over here to the daily chart. Just look at these moving averages. We have the death cross already. And that next order block really is probably back over here on 39,370. After that, if we start breaking down below that, all the way back down to 36,000, that's not the best place to be, if you ask me. And of course, we're still in this weird red change of character mode where even though we popped, we're still in a kind of a bearish setup. Uh, but I will say this, the MACD is still bullish, even though it's about to go bearish. The stochastic is still bullish, very bullish. And the RSI is bullish turning bearish, actually. So that's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, the stochastic is still going strong here, which I kind of like. Um, so again, we're seeing many more mixed signals, which is typically why you see that sideways action. I don't like trading in sideways markets. I suck at it. Person, like, like I tell you guys all the time, I suck at trading Tesla. I don't like trading in sideways markets. The way you the way you trade in sideways markets on the daily chart is to go and trade on the 15 minute chart and the one hour chart. But I don't like doing that. Um, like I can do it. That's a little bit better. But if you like day trading, maybe a little bit. But you know, swing trading in a sideways market, like what 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 are you trying to do? <laughs> you know, what are you trying to do? It doesn't really work. But if you go over here to maybe a 15 minute chart and you play some of these simple moves, you know. Look at the opportunities that were presented to you. You had a change of character here, buy, buy, buy. Sure, you could take that a little bit. There's a little bit of resistance right up here. There's a little bit of resistance up here. You could have sold at any one of those if your scalper, probably the shorter one. If you want to do more day trading, you have opportunities here. But honestly, who knows however long it's going to go because you see these drops and you, know, you move up your stop loss and get taken out. All right. Over here, red change of character popped in. You had a sell, sell, sell. Look how much profit that gave you. Wow. Granted, the four hours uh, going the other way, so you probably wouldn't have taken that trade in the first place. But, you know, anyway, change of character right here. Sell, sell, sell. Didn't really go down that much. I, I don't like this. I don't like it. You know, I don't like scalping like this. So I, I just tend to be like, fuck it. I just don't do it. I just don't do it. It annoys the crap out of me. Uh, I mean, maybe the five-hour charts, those might actually, I mean, the five-minute charts, those could be much more um, exciting, you know? 
But even then, you're only in the trade for maybe 10 to 15 minutes, and you're going to have to have some capital behind you and some leverage in order to get that, that, that money pumping. And you can see right here, mixed signals right here, a change of character positive with a green, green, green. Now, they are in more, uh, well, this one's in more oversold territory, so, but still, everything green, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's, just, uh, it's just painful to try to watch this right now. Which is why I'm just like, okay, I can't exactly try to tell you guys exactly the timing of the move down. But as far as I'm concerned, we are going to be looking at another move down here pretty soon. Where we at least try to test out some of these support levels and whatever happens, happens. I'm hoping that we can manage to bounce off of them. But if not, the world's not going to end. It's just going to be a little bit of another, you know, it's going to be another buying opportunity for everybody. You ever think about doing videos while walking Loki? Um, I was thinking about them a little bit, but okay. I have this thing called a gimbal somewhere. Uh, I think it's upstairs in my one of my rooms, um, and it keeps my phone stable while I do it. But I lost the connector to put like my phone in this connector, and there's a magnet that goes to the gimbal. I lost the connector that goes from the phone to the gimbal, so I have no way of connecting it. Otherwise, my phone's gonna be janky as hell. Um, so what I was thinking of doing instead is when I can, I was gonna buy some of those Google glasses and just kind of walk around a little bit but it wouldn't be in my neighborhood. I'd probably be walking around on the beach or something like that. That way nobody can track my exact location. Um, but I was thinking eventually, yeah. I mean, I'm not the type of guy that really cares if I'm talking to my glasses or talking to you guys and people are staring at me funny. But who, you know, who gives a fuck? But um, uh, I know I've been trying to go on more walks with Loki. He's been, uh, I mean, we've been going on plenty actually, but um, they haven't been as long as I like them to be. Normally when I go on walks with Loki, I like them to be like three hours long, where we're just kind of chugging along, maybe take a break every now and get on a bench, give him some water, give him some food. I have a little backpack I take with everything. Um, but they've been more like, uh, 45 minute to hour walks lately because I've been kind of busy. So I'm hoping to get out there a little bit more. And hey, Cactuluso, I can't pronounce it. Leo, Cactuluso, I'm, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Good trading perspective there. Yeah, dude, it, it it's a personal thing. There are a lot of other traders on YouTube who really excel at sideways trading. They like it. They, it's it's their thing. Um, it's really a momentum and change of character type of thing, and I totally understand it. But it's just not the way I like to trade. I like to buy, relax a little bit, play a video game as I watch my plan work out. But I want large enough moves where I'm not having to increase my leverage so high. Um, you know, because then the more fees, more risk, it's just not something I like. <laughs> Mattis, fuck hell yeah. I, I don't like Kyle. And this is this is two years ago, and I still remember the name. I normally forget people's names very easily because, you know, ADHD. I remember Kyle. I remember Kyle. Check out uh, Branquia in Colombia and Dylan also heard it's beautiful and cheap. Ooh, that might be kind of cool too. I don't think my grandparents would want me moving to Colombia though. So the reason I chose Panama is because my grandparents keep on saying, we're getting up there in age, we just can't travel as much as we used to. And I was like, okay, well, where can I go where I know that my grandparents are gonna feel safe? They're not gonna freak out about everybody. Because, you know, my grandmother talks to Hispanics, and granted, I'm half Hispanic. She'll talk to somebody like, hello, are you able to understand English? You know, and, and then, you know, I, I don't want that to offend somebody or something like that. So I was thinking of all these places that I can go, and I was like, Panama's pretty good. Panama's much more expensive than Ecuador and a few other options at like Colombia that I was looking at. Um, but I figured my grandparents would have an easy enough time getting there, whether it be by cruise, by plane, whatever. And then I could have them in one of my guest rooms, or I could pay for them to have a nice hotel room, either, you know, either one works. And then from there... I could have a car pick us up and take us around, you know, just rent an SUV for the day. And I would take them to my favorite food spots, my local bars and stuff like that. Show them everything they want to see. And then, um, you know, they could see, oh, wow, this isn't as crazy and dangerous as we thought it was, you know. And then, you know, I can send them back on the home of the merry way. And I says, anytime you guys want to come back over here, they can come back over. But uh, again, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's kind of a journey as far as that's concerned. Like here, I'll, I'll show you guys this while we're kind of waiting for Bitcoin to take this next leg down here. If I go over here to my bookmarks, I was looking at a few different options as far as hotel rooms uh, or, oops, not that, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh no, Bitcoin, there we go. 
arts. I was looking at a few different places as far as, you know, what could I look, what could I afford, some of that. I'm trying to stand under like 1500 bucks right now because from what I understand, it's like 400 to $500 to get a live-in made with you. Um, and I want to have a live-in made because I don't want to do anything. Um, that's the whole purpose of me going down, that I can focus more on YouTube and all that type of stuff. But basically, if I go over here and I turn up like a three-bedroom, right? You get a 1400 square foot apartment in San Francisco, 1200 bucks. Uh, 1600 square foot apartment, three bedroom in Cali 50. We don't know what that is. And you know, and I'm going to be looking through these types of places. And if I don't like them, honestly, I'm going to be moving up that budget to $2,000 and $2,000, you know, in the Latin American market's pretty hefty up there. But you know, then you get like 3000 square feet basically for a three bedroom loft, um, downtown with two car spots and things like that. So, you know, this is in Bella Vista again, you know, loft, nice, simple has stairs and whatnot. Um, but you know, $1,900 it's furnished, which is kind of nice. All utilities are pretty much included in this. Um, decent views. I'm not a, I'm not a big guy as far as views are concerned. I am a little bit, I don't know if I want to have a balcony just with Loki cause I'm kind of like, you know, uh, anxiety would spike off of that. But, um, you know, stuff like that, you know, then have a maid's quarters and things like that. I, I'm, I'm trying to find my way around it. Usually you find a lot better deals once you go down and you're talking and you're kind of negotiating. When I'm just over here uh, saying, hey, I'm thinking about moving there in 2025. They're just like, well, why the fuck do I care about you right now? That's basically the attitude they have. So I'm like, okay, fair enough. Um, I'm going to go over there in December, go over there for a whole week, travel, eat the food, meet the people, check out some country clubs because they have some of the cool country clubs out there. And then just, you know, see what it would take for me to get out there and the process for moving and all those final preparations and stuff. Cause I'm gonna have to get Loki over there too. And that's already going to be a hassle enough. Cause I'm gonna have to probably charter a private plane with other people who also have dogs that want to go to Panama. So the time I move there might not be specified. It might just be like, okay, now sometime over the next five months, I'm going to be able to pack up everything I own within a matter of like a month and then just move over there. Cause it's gonna be like a 30 day heads up, but you know, it's, it's that type of stuff. How high do I think ADA can go into this current uh, bull run? It can go pretty high, but just remember, this is a high market cap token. It's it's only going to go so crazy, right? Right now, we just hit this first order block. We're getting rejected off of it, and now we're looking for some support levels and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, we're, we're easily going to make it back up here towards like $250, $3, something like that. We will most likely be making new all-time highs. They've been doing enough work to keep it, you know, going strong. However... After that, there are some clear high points that are just going to be off of your basic Fibonacci levels on the weekly and or actually I might as well just do the monthly chart right here. Let me add the magnet. And that's the lowest part right here. All right. Right after we hit those highs, it really comes to are we going to actually break about 536? I don't know. Yeah, you know. I'm keeping all of my projections kind of close to the vest on this one. Um, like you see, you know, some people might say, I, I think I've seen a lot of videos actually is 80 as far as $10 and that's in this next altcoin rally. I've been keeping a lot of my projections just a little bit lower than most people, just because I'm kind of concerned about what happens to the economy. If Bitcoin's in a bull run and the US economy starts going off flippity floppity and we see the stock market come down, we see the dollar value increase, we see interest rates kind of crashing down by the same time coming down for bad reasons. I'm kind of worried about that. And so I'm kind of like a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower than everybody else. But I do think kind of around five to $6 would be a good estimate for everybody. Uh, and again, we haven't even gotten to that parabolic path yet. Uh, we're kind of like right here probably when it comes to it. So we are looking for some higher levels. It's just that I'm always a little bit more concerned when we see stuff like that going on. Now, one thing that I think would be beneficial though, is if we come over here and turn fib levels based off, a uh, little bit different thing here. All right. Still around five dollars here, but a little bit lower instead of like the six dollar range, five dollars and twenty cents. I think that's kind of still good enough for me. If I go back over here, five twenty versus five thirty six. Actually, those are pretty darn close together. You know, somewhere around there, I would say it would be a good level. It, you know, maybe we don't, uh, maybe we end up breaking out of it, but I do think there'll be a little bit of support level here, or maybe we have a little bit of a dip like that for a, few, a little bit of time, and then we move higher. Other thing you might want to consider in the short term here, because this one is a, uh, um. Very weird. How do I, we haven't found the bottom right here necessarily, but if I were to pull this up right here, we did hit that level of resistance. The next one is gonna be 123 as far as the price. After that 504, 
we're still getting up into that five dollar range five to six dollars where you are going to see that level of resistance really have an impact even if i were to oops, i have the lock on all right everything above that nothing really there although can i add something here no no i got the largest one on there just in case for these scenarios but yeah i think it can go it can go high but just understand it's it's a market cap issue just by it going up to 550 or 560 or six dollars whatever you know from where we are in, from the lows we experienced up to five dollars 550 let's say that's still 2500 percent it's still good but you know tens of thousands of percent nah, you, you know you're just stretching a little bit from where we are now up to 550 or something like that that's around a thousand percent still really great returns but um if to get those great returns let me tell you what you are going to be waiting a few months <laughs> so make sure that's not a bad thing the monthly charts have recently turned green it's all looking good for the future um but you know week by week you're going to have these fluctuations that are just going to be making you tear out what little hair you have or you know me whatever little hair i have um you know even now the monthly chart when it comes to bitcoin you're seeing that resistance up here we got rejected off of it not the end of the world this is going to be a crucial month for bitcoin but you drag this up here low high low rejection now there are, there are different ways to do this of course but bitcoin has some resistance up here that makes sense upwards of around ninety eight thousand. it's going to be a huge wall around a hundred thousand dollars bitcoin uh it's going to be a massive wall but if we're able to break above it which i think we will that's where you see bitcoin start to go completely nuts you know 105 110 120 thousand before we eventually have a massive crash event but let's not worry for that uh, let's not worry about the crash events until we've actually had the pump uh but yeah so ada should be fine down the road but right now yeah it's a little iffy but you know it's a it's a loading zone we're still in the loading zone better to say that i don't want to make it sound like i'm like selling all my ada or something like that because at one point i did sell a lot of my ada i did sell a lot because they were getting delisted off of a bunch of exchanges and i didn't know why so i was like okay if that's the way i'm done sell it now now i don't have to worry about it so much Hey, AWAC or AWAC, excuse me, I can't pronounce the name. I entered so long at 101. Do you suggest to hold or sell or enter low? Talking about my life savings here. Um, usually, if you have a large amount of money in crypto and you're trying to play the game of, you know, like making money and, like, you know, buy low, sell high, typically in the scenarios, I would just say don't touch it. Just let the bull market come and you can make money while holding. Um, I would tell you to also diversify because I'm, I'm technically not a financial advisor. So I can't tell you what to do with your money, but. If you have a certain amount of money in your portfolio that makes you feel uncomfortable, it's most likely going to be too much money in there. Um, so I would say play it safe, whatever you feel is the most comfortable to kind of get your butterflies out of your stomach, do that. And then when you kind of reevaluate everything, decide next time you put money into cryptocurrency, are you looking to hold it for a month, a week, a few weeks, what? Because right now I'm thinking that the market's going to be coming down for a, uh, a few weeks, like a few weeks from now, I expect the market to be lower. I am not 100% right. So, you know, my opinion shouldn't go so far into determining exactly what you're doing with your um your your positions, but I, hello. You okay? Okay, you all. But uh yeah, I I would say be careful about putting uh, you know all of your life savings in a certain token. Uh I have a friend that put all of his life savings into Solana. He's doing very well with it right now, but you know, Solana has been coming down a little bit, you know, time after time. It, it just pumped up quite a bit. Usually the, the reversals are quite extreme just because it went up so much. But it should continue on going to like crazy highs down the road. But it's definitely like we talked about idiot. It's going to take a little bit of time for us to get there. All right. Hold on a second. Loki's Loki up. He's been. I don't know what's going on with him right now. You okay. Ooh, you got scratched by the kitty cat. He got scratched by the cat looks like. Yeah. You probably were doing something you weren't supposed to do. I gotta put some ointment on after this um the stream is over. That shouldn't be too for a while. Well, actually, uh, I'll be right back. Let me just move my picture. I'm literally walking into my hallway and going to my little doggy thing, but I'll be back. I wanna make sure his face is okay. Be back in like 60 seconds.
All right, I'm back. That was a that was a fast one. I just have to put some stuff on. I'm very fast, so bear with me here. Hmm. even get a treat for this bacon treat up oh. let me check the eyeball okay sorry about that I just want to make sure he's okay um, that means you gotta stop playing around with the cat careful he swallowed the bacon too fast and he's like Bleh. you good okay he should be good going on Make sure this stuff doesn't bother me, but I got like a thousand things for Loki in case he ever gets hurt just because I'm paranoid about it. All right. Oh, uh, what's right here? That's a nice thing in my family. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it should be fine, but like living maids are pretty nice. So if they're here for like, you know, a couple weeks or something like that, that means you know, they, have a, they have a maid taking care of them. They have, I always have a maid taking care of me, but yeah, it'll, it'll be really, really nice. Uh, live in May, you doggy. Uh, my grandmother said the same thing until I told her that uh, if I get a maid, a full-time maid, she's not going to be a younger maid because I don't want her to have to leave me because she is, uh, you know, she has a baby or something. I have to get like an older maid, which is what all my friends who have had maids in Latin America say. I had a maid here that I really enjoyed. Uh, Loki really enjoyed her, but she got pregnant <laughs> and then she, uh, she quit and I was just like, damn. I, I, it takes a while for me to form a bond of trust with some, somebody coming into my house to clean up everything, you know? Uh, especially because, you know, I have access to all my crypto stuff. So if, like, you know, if I leave my computer unlocked and she just sees, like, oh, my God, this guy has a wallet of thousands of dollars. Uh, you know, let me steal $50,000 and put it on my Coinbase account, you know? I, I, I have to have a lot of trust with them, <laughs> basically. Um, so, you know... Uh, moving down there, it's going to be a process, but you know, it, it'll happen pretty well. And hey, Knuckle Buster, happy to see you. Thanks to you for the analysis. I much appreciate it. Yeah, no worries, guys. I'm always happy to help you guys out. Just make sure that, you know, when, you, when you're doing your trades in general, just make sure they're, they're um, you're not going to feel too bad if the trade doesn't go your way. Even if that means you're only taking a small amount of money. Like uh, typically when I am doing trades with you guys and talking about stuff, uh, you know, I'll know when I do my stop loss, like, okay, I'm going to lose a hundred bucks if this trade doesn't go well, but I'll make 300 bucks if the trade goes well, stuff like that. I'm okay with losing a hundred bucks. I, I, uh, I went to the casino, uh, after I was done out of the cigar lounge last Sunday during the NFC championship game. And I plopped a hundred dollars into a game and I lost a hundred bucks. And I was just like, damn. Then I walked out and I was like, okay, I'm okay. Yeah. It's, it's life. It's just gambling a little bit. Um, and I had like 500 bucks in cash on me, but you know, when I, when I gamble, I said to myself, like, okay, let's just do $100 and see where it goes. If the 100 turns into $200, I'm okay still losing that $200. I really am because I like, I enjoy gambling, but I, I don't enjoy paying for gambling, if that makes sense. Um, so that's why as long as it's like, you know, house money, I'm fine losing that type of money. If I know I'm gonna lose a hundred bucks at the end of the day, net, I'm fine with it. It's led me to play in casinos for hours because, you know, you can win like a thousand bucks off of a hundred dollar bill, you know, do really good. And then all of a sudden I walk out with like 200 bucks, even though I could have walked out with a thousand uh, dollars, but. I'd been gambling for like four hours straight. I was having so much fun. You know, it, it's why you're there. Um, but, you know, you still walk with some money sometimes. Sometimes I just lose it all. So most of the time I lose it all. What am I, what am I talking about? Most of the time I lose it all. Am I an INJ? Uh, I think a little bit. Not really much. I, it's something on my dollar cost average list if we do move down a little bit more. But basically with that one, it just ran up too fast for me to really get a handle on it and get enough to really matter. So I like the concept, I like what they're trying to do, but for me, um, I wasn't able to buy as much as I wanted to just because it didn't rally up so fast. That thing was chugging and chugging and chugging. As it comes back down, I'll be happy to buy more, but it's on a few of my watch lists for sure. Uh, oh, sorry, I got a bill that just said, hey, uh, you know that pretzel, the music we usually listen to on the stream, uh, they were, they were saying that they, uh, they took the money out of my account. I, I pay for like three times over or like two twice times over for all the streams of that, but I, I'm not using them anymore on my mainstream because they keep on getting falsely flagged for somebody else's music. 
And so all of my streams, like over the past like few weeks, besides like this week and last week, all of them, all of my streams have been saying, oh yeah, you use somebody else's music so you can't make any money off of this video. So I've just been ticked off and I said, no more music, who cares? You guys can listen to my, my, uh, my soothing voice and that'll be enough. Speaking of soothing voice here, um, I'm going to light one of these cigars here because I've really been looking forward to it for a while. I got two. I got a Tatawahe right here. Uh, Tuxla. I can't pronounce that word to save my life. And I got a La Paulina 125, 125 year anniversary one. So I'm thinking I'm going with the La Paulina first just because it doesn't have a wrapper. But for that, I do need to get this cut going. And Bitcoin's trying to do the smallest of reversals here. And we'll see how it works out. But man, it's a, it's a process in and of itself. Can I go right here? Yeah. Uh, it'll survive. Okay. Hmm. Okay, that's not bad. Hey, Nawai Safiri, I appreciate it, man. I like having people watch me from all over the world. It's really nice. Oh, what's right here? How are you? I would like to know your opinion on... Bitcoin down. Uh, I mean, I think Bitcoin is going down, but that's over weekly oscillators. If there's like a specific indicator you want me to check out, I can do that for you. But yeah, I, I think Bitcoin's going to be going down over the next few weeks. Um, I was wrong about the last one, so please understand that before you start jumping on whatever I say right now. Um, I was right about Bitcoin going down technically, but I thought the continuation would be strong enough to keep it going down for a period of time. We had a pretty strong rebound that I was not expecting, and I was ticked off about it. Um, so I guess you can make a little bit of money, but ugh, I want to make a lot of money when I trade. That's the way I like it. A few trades a month, a lot of money. You kind of rest for the most of the time. I work on YouTube and stuff like that. It, it's very peaceful. Uh, when you guys start after doing a lot of work, <laughs> it's not so peaceful. Dude, same with me and gambling. I said like $100, $200 to gamble, then I'm done. Also, if I make some money, I walk away. See, yeah, exactly. Crypto is enough gambling. But see, if I make some money, I don't necessarily walk away. Uh... <laughs> the more alcohol I have in my system, the more likely I'm to keep on playing. Uh, but that's mostly with table games, not when it comes to slots. So hold on a second here. Not as dry as I would have thought. Wow. More of a journey to, to smoke this one. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I truly do enjoy gambling. I found myself a lover of crap since the last time I went to Vegas. I truly did enjoy it. Um, but, you know, I walked up with like 400 bucks. You know, I played for like three and a half hours. I walked away with like 850 bucks. Also, I gave like 100 bucks in tips to the, the workers there. Cause I just had a, they, they taught me how to play craps. They were really nice about it. And then on top of that, um, uh, the ladies, like the, the little dancing girls and stuff that bring you drinks, they are bringing me, uh, Irish coffees all fucking night. I was enjoying myself. Uh, I had some really nasty cocktails up at their lounge at, um, uh, what's that place called? Uh, Circa. Circa. I had some really nasty cocktails up on the top floor of the legacy club. I just need to stick to my old fashions. I love old fashions. I really do. When I start going to these off-brand drinks and stuff like that, uh, yeah, they were just disgusting. Um, which sucked because I really wanted to have a good cocktail. I'm not so much of a tutti fruity cocktail guy, but I like to try them to see if I like them. Uh, but <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I did not. Any thoughts on low caps like Zingli or Turbo? Do they move in Bitcoin moves that good bad? With those low market cap tokens, it's really a big gamble. So the way you have to play them, if you want to be um, smart, is you're only going to put a few bucks into it, and then you're going to have to hope that they turn into a lot of money. When I see influencers and people promoting those types of tokens, typically what's going to happen here is that influencer would have bought those tokens quite a bit of time ago. And now they're going to pump it up knowing that they can move at least... Ten to fifty thousand dollars into that coin, pumping it up quite a bit, and thereby that influencer can really start to dump some of their shares onto the people that are um, watching their videos and stuff like that. I have always said, like you know, it's kind of a risky thing. I've tried to go in a few of them before, and I've made some money off of it, but typically most of them don't succeed because they're really just um, 
rug pulls, you know, typically they're just rug pulls. If you want to go down that path, I would say do your research, spend about an hour on each token you want to buy. Hour doesn't seem like a lot of time, but it's much more than people do for a lot of other tokens out there. Put about $20 in there. You don't need to go higher than that. If you have something that's a million dollar market cap, a $500,000 market cap, and you put a, a 20 bucks in there, if it hits a billion dollar market cap, you are going to be just fine. Um, let me see. Uh, Oh, okay, I, yeah. No. Let me open up Chat GPT very fast. And just do this, have it do the math for me because I don't want to do it. All right, hold on a second. Um, So one million to a billion using twenty dollars. Oh, Jesus! It's trying to teach me. Hold on, I, I, it's trying to. Uh, I don't want to be taught. Just please give me the answer. I try to be nice to robots. You never know. It's analyzing. It's still analy <laughs> analyzing. Um, okay, so you know, if you go from one million market cap up to one billion, that twenty bucks would turn into nineteen thousand nine hundred eighty. That's plenty for a twenty dollar investment. That's the way I think about it. Uh, if you want to cut it down to ten, of course, you could do the same thing there. You'd be half the profit, but it's still good. Um, and you have a much higher chance of doing it if you kind of split it up because the majority of them will be go to zero, frankly, right? Um, so you're doing your research, you're trying to figure out what works, you're trying to figure out who's working on the project, what projects they've worked on before, trying to learn more about the community, uh, that type of stuff. And then maybe, just maybe, a rare chance you get lucky and you're hoping on that rare chance. Um, if something is doing good over a period of time, you can add more money to it. So maybe you want to add another 50 bucks, another 20 bucks. But primarily, it, you don't really have to add too much money to make money on these. That, that's the crucial thing you have to understand. Um, people do often put like a $500 or $1,000 into these micro caps. All that's doing is they're, they're, not, they're not waiting for it to hit a billion. They're waiting for that $1 million to hit like $4 million, then they're out. Because eventually, it's going to continue. It's going to fall. Um, and so that's the way that they're usually playing it. If you want to go long term, small amounts of money typically work better in, in my humble opinion here. Um, but yeah, it, it can it can be a you know it's very risky, right? Caps is the shit, definitely. And hey Ty, can people copy trade? I haven't done copy trading for like a part, a minute here, but I think I'm gonna start it back up. Um Well, like I kind of went on an extensive rant with you guys, I'm not good at trading sideways moves. So because of that, I've kind of just been like, eh, let me hold on and wait so I can see what's better. Like if I go over here to, huh, uh, hi guys. Make sure I'm logged in. Uh, assets, copy. See, is there a way to show this? I 
I can try to show it. Like, okay, it's going to be very hard to see. But I've been doing a lot of smaller trading because of all the stuff going on. And, you know, it sucks because you could have like a $6, $15, whatever. It could equal, it could equal up to maybe $150. But then all of a sudden you lose 200 bucks, And so it's kind, of a net, it's kind of a net negative. Although sometimes, I guess, overall, it's kind of a positive. But I, I got to wait for more favorable conditions. There are other people out there that will do copy trading. There's a whole list of them on here all the time. Um, typically, the person that I would prefer that I like the most is probably Yin Yang Wolf. Um, there are a few people out there who do trading probably better than him, but he does a lot of scalping. Um, and I think if you give him a little bit of money, you can kind of watch it kind of grow. I don't think with any copy trader out there, you need to give him a large portion of your portfolio. Just a small amount usually does it. Because if I go over here to, uh, this guy right here, uh, Virtual Bacon, um, this guy is a mystery to me. He has a massive channel. He talks a lot about technical analysis and stuff like that. But you go over and you look at the copiers. His copiers have lost a shit ton of money here. Um, so he must have been making some good trades and then he made some really bad trades. But this is the kind of the point I want you guys to see. Um, whether you guys are going to follow me on uh, Fairdesk or you know the other sponsor uh, BYD5, if you guys are looking for another exchange, go check them out. They're a new sponsor of the channel. Um, you know, I don't want you guys to be in a position where you lose fourteen thousand dollars over one hundred thirty-four days, or lose a thousand bucks, or um, you know, somebody somebody over the last twenty-four days has made one hundred twenty-six dollars. You know, like down four thousand bucks, down two thousand bucks, down twenty-seven thousand dollars. Holy f shit! You know. Down three thousand dollars, down three hundred forty-four, up twelve hundred, down a hundred, up six hundred, down a hundred. You know, I don't want you guys in these, um, you know, positions here. So you know, a little bit, a little bit, if you want to copy along, but really, you got to be, you got to be careful with here. Like last ninety days, his copy traders have lost like thirty thousand uh, dollars. You got, you got to, you got to be careful about that. And he's done some good positions. You know, it's just that. Um, Oh, they come in. Okay, they may be more mixed. Um, but yeah, copy trading is kind of a weird thing, and I'm, I'm, I need to have favorable conditions if I copy trade. Because uh, even right now, I haven't been doing as many trades with you guys because I've just been like, okay, well, this isn't fun because <laughs> you know, everything's kind of going more sideways here. What I got going over here is, um, I got my long term portfolio. I, I, I uh, 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 a specific long term portfolio. I moved over here to Fairdesk. And I've been adding in about 500 bucks every week, 400 bucks every week and kind of buying up more crypto tokens. But I haven't been buying up as many because I've been hoping that Bitcoin would have come back down. And if Bitcoin came back down, a lot of my, I can buy a lot more tokens. But right now, you know, um, mostly everything's down because Bitcoin's been going down. But you know, I'm trying to teach an overall lesson of dollar cost averaging. You can, dollar start, you can start dollar cost averaging now. And by the time the altcoin season kicks around, bull market comes on, it won't matter because you're gonna be very happy with the money that you made. But that being said, I am still down 800 bucks right now through my dollar cost averaging strategy. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a freaking process right here. But honestly, I'm okay with that. I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it. Hey, Rebecca, happy to see you back. Bacon is a no-go. What do you call, I know, what do you call, he's a big fan of the bacon. Yeah, you are. He doesn't get to eat it too often, but... Uh, well, actually, he doesn't get to eat pork too often. He's a chicken and, uh, primarily, a, he's a, he's a lamb guy. Loki, um, uh, I think he's a little bit too much pampered, but he's a real big lamb guy. Bouncing up a bit now, what do I think? I mean, sure, we're bouncing up, but this is just a 15-minute chart, you know. Um, usually when I'm looking at what the forecast for the next week or something like that, I'm looking at the weekly chart, the monthly chart, maybe the daily, well, of course the daily charts, stuff like that. What you're going to want to see, if you want to see a little bit more of a short term kind of bottoming out, what you're going to want to see is probably some of the oscillators get to more positive territory or some, uh, bullish divergence kind of happening right now. I don't really see much bullish divergence or hidden divergence. I can pop open this for you right now. Cause we could always have, um, we could always start going more sideways here. That's pretty much what we've been doing. Um, you know, like I said, we're not going to really get concerned until we start breaking down below this order block here because of the cluff fluffle, as I put it. 
of what's about to happen with all those moving averages. Uh, but here's divergence of many indicators, one, right? So there's only one divergence there, which is bearish, and one divergence there, which is uh, bullish. I don't know which is one. Hidden, yes. Here, hit five. Yeah, there, there's just not much divergence right now. We're not seeing anything that's really like saying, hey, oh, something really big is about to come along. Daily chart. You see when you have a lot of divergences happening at the same time, MACD, histogram, RSI, CCI, OBV, and the volume weighted MACD, um, or VW MACD, um, you know, when you have all of this aligned, it makes it a lot easier. We're not looking at anything. Because frankly, where we are, if you kind of put these two things together, is we're in the neutral zone. This is typically where you don't see a lot of people like to making trades. Uh, most people don't like to make trades here because it's annoying. Um, the profit you make from here is kind of the same as the stop loss right there, so the ratio really isn't that good. Um, typically, if you want to just go off of typical patterns and whatnot, you maybe could say, okay, we have a level of support here. We have some lower highs here. If Bitcoin's able to consolidate for maybe one or two more days, we have the opportunity to break out, flag, and then, of course, go back to that original theory of ours that we're going to hit another shoulder right up here, like kind of a shoulder, head, shoulder. Not exactly, but you get the point. And then from there, we would actually start to decline a little bit more and then continue to fall down. I thought this was going to happen first, but it doesn't seem like it because Bitcoin isn't making that much momentum here. It's just not... That's not taking advantage of all the moves we've had so far. So really, uh, that's why I said over the next few weeks, I expect us to come back down. But I think there's still a chance for us to break out before we go down. To me right now, again, the four hour charts all went bearish. That was not the best thing here. Uh, the stochastic just went bearish here, bearish here. So pretty much all the bearish signs he got, they kind of kicked off right. When did everything really become bearish? Right here. Right here as we fell down the first one, it continued on. You know, so it's not really the, the end of the world as I would say it. It's just kind of an opportunity for people to buy up and load up on more cryptocurrency. If you want to get more pessimistic about the market and kind of more about what I'm talking about, in order for that to happen, we still have to break down below this order block or this support level. We're not there yet, even though we, you know, we're close, but we're just not there. We just started a new week. We could just be wicking to start off the week in a negative way, then bounce up later on for that break out there all right you got a couple right over here a couple stochastics that's not too crazy but you know you see it you see on the short term time frames right here making a little bit of a move trying to hit an order block or probably bound for a little bit again bitcoin's been mostly going sideways we have to break that sideways action before you start to panic right now it's just like you know enjoy the moves i mean yes you, you may be panicking if you look at the, maybe just a 15 minute chart here's a five minute chart but you know it's not you know, it's not too crazy here if we just look at what, where we've been over the past few days, right? 15-minute chart over the past few weeks. We've had our hard times. So we can always bounce back, but, you know, again, um, this time looks like we're still, we, we haven't found a way to change the lower high situation, but we have found a way to um, get more into a squeeze potential here. But, you know, that little flag we've been talking about. Auto. I feel like there's something missing from my chart, but I just can't put my eye on it. But that's okay. I wish Robinhood would let people get uh, people the oh would give people the option to do stop loss for I honestly I don't know why they don't because it's not like you guys are trading with leverages or something. Um, they they should somehow allow it. I wonder if it's because of the spread or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. When I see Robin Hood, you know, I see them as having so much potential, but unwilling to do those, um, those quality of life changes to make their app really a, a feel like a homey pay, a place, because I think they could be so much better than Coinbase if they just invested and changed stuff up. Like one of the things I really hate about Coinbase, even though I use it because it's the best option for me out there is I really don't like how, um, they have a spread. Uh, a 0.05 percent spread when it comes to uh the usdc transactions um i really hate that quite a bit and because of that i'm just always annoyed with them 
uh, because you know every time I move crypto over, it's a tether, or whatever. Uh, there's a, there's a spread on it. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. And I know they're just taking money from me because I'm the one selling them my USDT, or you know, so I know that they're getting how much USDT I sell, right? Um, so it's very very annoying. They should just have it a one to one ratio and be done with it. But it's their way of taxing the system without calling it a tax, um, because everybody goes through stable coins. You know, how else do you ever buy Bitcoin? Mike, I'm watching your streams and highlighted my day. I appreciate you because you're the only one of the few YouTubers who aren't trying to pump their bags. Super appreciate you. Oh, yeah. I mean, you've known this for a while, man, and I appreciate you watching me all the time, too, because you've been here for a long time. Um, you know, hello. Sorry, Loki's over here trying to get uh, head rubs and stuff. Um, yeah, I see your eyeball. I see your eye. I know you got scratched in the eye. Um, I don't know. YouTubers are kind of a weird breed. Because I know quite a few, but you have to do what the algorithm wants you to do. And basically what the algorithm is, all, all the algorithm is as far as YouTube is concerned is it's what do people want to see? So here. The way the algorithm typically works, and maybe I can show this to you through my things. Let me go to the last few days here. In case any of you guys are wondering how much of a big shot YouTuber I am, I made 933 bucks over the last 28 days. So, you know, <laughs> bear with me. I got sponsors, and I guess that's where I would say the majority of my income comes when it comes to YouTube itself, not necessarily trading. Um, like, I put out a video. This video right here. So this video only has 483 or 438 views. It's got me three subscribers and it's made me $4. Okay. Now this video will probably eventually make me money. It'll probably be worth my time. However, when you guys see my videos, you guys know that I am a much more of a teacher than an entertainer. Uh, Tom crown is an amazing entertainer when it comes to his videos. I think he's only has one that's taken off, but he has a really good editing team behind it. Uh, because he also tries to teach stuff, but it's, it's just less spoon fed. I, I have ADHD, so spoon feeding is spoon feeding is spoon feeding. Um, but if I go over, over here to my reach, oh no, my engagement, and it'll have this little chart here behind my head. And let me see if I can uh, take off my head. There you go. You see this little thing right here? It'll kind of show how people tune in and when they click off and stuff like this, kind of bounce around. People don't watch my videos from beginning to end. I have an hour and seven minute long video and they are watching. Don't, don't be ground at me. Girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but people usually watch about nine and a half to maybe 10 minutes of this video. And that's fine. Maybe they're only looking for a specific section. One of the things I've been learning is people go to my tutorials, not because they want to learn everything about smart money concepts. They want to learn about what a specific tool does. What does fair value gaps do? What does the trend line tool do? That type of stuff. Um, and so they only watch a portion of it. In order to get YouTube to promote this to a lot of people, this number has to probably get up towards 20 uh, minutes and then it'll start pumping it out to more and more people. Um, but my videos aren't designed like that. No, you can't. Nope. No, no, no. I know you get some treats later on. So, you know, when I'm doing my work and stuff like that, I don't change for the algorithm, which means I get a whole bunch of 300, 400, something like that. But if I go over here to, uh, Oh, dashboard, no content. Analytics research. Okay. There's a research tab here and it'll tell me what the, the big guys are doing here. When you see something like this, you know, uh, pay attention to these major Bitcoin signals by crypto or us. Sure. Cryptorus has a massive channel. Sometimes he gets into a little bit of drama, but he's a really good guy, right? Um, but he has 700,000 people watching him and his videos are maybe getting like 40,000, 50,000 views. And that's just kind of the way it rolls because of the way the new YouTube algorithm is kind of working. Then you've got other people out there like it's officially happening. Nothing can stop it. Michael Cohen, my financial friend, the modern investor, kind of like recent, recent things have been going on. But not many people do what I do as far as those... Um, spoon fed tutorials uh heck you know one of the videos that's making me the not money but it's getting me the most views right now 
is a simple video about how to add trend lines to uh how to add trend lines to a trading view chart like a here let's open up a, new, a youtube incognito youtube how to add how to add moving average on trading view right there i am it's those type of videos that do very well for me then i got how to add moving average on trading view 2024 because they actually changed it um but the other one's obviously still getting more views then i got one how to add exponential moving averages how to add double exponential moving averages and then eventually down there it might be like how to add uh triple exponential moving averages that's how i design my channel to kind of fluctuate uh, to work but you know it works uh, it works for me i guess um, a lot of other YouTubers like to have a lot more money, but what usually happens is a lot of them will stagnate. So I try to keep my subscribers kind of in line with Tom crown as far as how many I'm getting. Uh, and then hopefully that, like, you know, we have a little competition between ourselves friendly. Um, and then there's a few other ones where I thought I would used to have a competition with them, but they've kind of fallen off because all they did re was rely on streaming uh, and not being able to change up their content a little bit. Um, because you know, it's stressful if you're really looking for views on YouTube because if something doesn't work, it really doesn't work. And you may lose money on it or something like that. I don't put myself in that position. And hey, Rumeko, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you, man. I appreciate it. Always one of the uh, hanging with an old friend. I, I do like that. Plus, plus with a cigar here, it helps out a little bit today. But here, let me show you something. So I, I'm friends with Tom. He's probably the only other real crypto influence that I talk with. That's like an influencer. I know the people that do uh, technical analysis channels and stuff like that, not nearly as sexy, but I will be doing some videos with them uh, pretty soon. I can't have any, nobody wants to share their face besides me. So I'm going to have like a little picture <laughs> of their logo on it so you can hear them talk, I guess. But I'm like, okay, I'm not going to, you know, not everybody wants to share their faces when they're doing technical analysis and stuff like that. But if I ever go over here to uh, vidIQ, I think I might've messed up logging in here. There we go. All right. Um, and you go over here to comp competitors, right? There are a few competitors that I have. So for the last 30 days, um, you know, I have 30, 364,000 views. I like it. You know, crypto jargon. Uh, he has 154,000 subscribers, like pretty much double mine. Uh, or no, a little bit uh, less than that, but still a lot. 789,000 views, quite a bit. Then you have uh, Jordan Cameron, who has 104,000, and Tim Crown, Tom Crown, who has 214,000. I really want to figure out what happened to Jordan Cameron, because I used to like watching his channel every now and again. Uh, not so much for his technical analysis, but he was um, he was entertaining as hell, and I was trying to bring some of that over to my channel. I just never could bring up the muster, the energy to do so. But he still gets like 2,000, 3,000 views for a video. My videos may get 1,000. So he still outpaces me. But for whatever reason, it hasn't been able to grow his channel. Which is letting me kind of like, huh, wonder what's going on. Like Tom right now, me and Tom have similar subscriber gains. You see Crypto Jargon is on a f steamroll right now, uh, pacing us all. But you see Jordan Cameron right here with just 200. And so, you know, we're all, all of us influencers trying to do different things here. Uh, for me, I'm going to be doing more streams. I'm going to be doing longer streams here. That's kind of the way I'm shifting. I, I used to do like a stream every day. But now I'm thinking of just doing two hour streams, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and Thursdays. Um, it's like, I'm gonna be like four streams a, a week, preferably, but gonna be two to three hour streams where I can kind of chill and talk with you guys for a longer period of time. And then after that, I'm going to be, how do I even say this? Uh, trying to invite friends on here from other channels and see what, you know, their perspectives, things like that. And then I'm going to be, uh, you know, putting out some shorts specifically about the economy and things of that economic data and just having a good old time talking about that stuff as well. So we'll see how all that goes. I'm kind of in that transition period myself, but as far as streaming, it's, it's nice. It's relaxing. Um, you know, I used to be much more stressed out about views, especially during the bear market. Now I just kind of realized after some therapy, to be honest, that like life is pretty good. Why am I stressing out about something I don't have to stress about? I am just used to being stressed out. I had, I've had some corporate jobs in my past. If you're not working corporate, if you're not stressed out, you're not middle management, if you're not stressed out, 
I thought middle management, you're supposed to not be stressed because all the people below you are making all the jobs happen, you know, all the work happen. No, nah, but I worked too hard for them. So I got myself stressed out because I was like, you know, like uh, dealing with upper management on their behalf. Fucking terrifying. Uh, luckily, middle man upper management needed me until they didn't. And once middle ma upper management let me go, they asked me for my job back. Well, they, they offered my job back after they figured out everything was crumbling. And I was like, no. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a little bit... Um, a lot, I'm only 29, but definitely a long, uh, stressful life. Uh, I'll have that one saved so I can go back and make sure I know what I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, no worries, man. Um, oh, yeah, if you guys hit the like button, comment, it always helps out the algorithm. Um, I know something that Tom Crown is very good at. He has a good way of spicing up the crowd, but I've never been able to turn myself into a sunglasses bro. Um, that, that you know, that's Tom's brand. I don't want to go off to his brand. Like, I, what, I have sunglasses? Yeah. Here. I got my Ray-Bans here. These Ray-Bans are polarized, so I can't see anything on my monitors right now whatsoever. I can still be like, ooh, popping off a cigar. Blah, blah. But, you know. Uh, I don't know. I, I've never felt more energetic talking with these things on. Although I will say in personal life, if I'm wearing sunglasses out, I do feel more confident because I'm allowed to like stare at somebody's face or whatever without feeling like they're staring back into my, my soul or something like that, uh, which is kind of always a bonus there. And it's Toshi. <laughs> Any comment helps, man. Any comment helps. Loki, you okay? Loki's over here just being a baby. Want head rubs and wagging his tail. There you go. Yeah, that's you. There you go. He was taking a nap, but then I got I got more animated with my hands and stuff. He's like, "Oh, something must be going on over here." I don't know. He has a toy right here, so there you go. He'll play with that for a little bit. But yeah, so you know, it's 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 pretty fun being a YouTuber. I would say, um, it's just that you know it gets stressful. I think when you're trying to find more and more views. Like if you go over here back to my channel. Analytics, you know, the last 28 days, uh, my views are my subscribers are going up. That's all I really care about. If they're going down, I feel like something is wrong going on. Um, but that's why we make fun of that other, um, the other YouTube channel. What's it called? Uh, Discover Crypto. So this was BitBoy's original channel, but when they had this coup d'etat against them, they tried to replace themselves as the head of the, the channel. So right now it's no longer BitBoy. It's like these two random guys who I know who no idea who they are, but they've been losing tens of thousands subscri of subscribers and ten millions of views ever since they got rid of BitBoy. And they somehow think that they're going to be able to take over the channel, which is absolutely insane. Um, and so you see how all of their stats crumbling down crumbling this is a bull market guys your, your your views are supposed to be going up not down and so it's been very weird to see how they've kind of um crushed this like crashed this whole thing when they could have done something so much different um the way you succeed at doing this coup d'etat and uh this is probably for my corporate lifestyle you don't make it people oriented anymore because this was bitboy what you do is since you own the um the channel BitBoy and whatnot, you own everything associated with it. You just literally make a little AI person, uh, not like a robot person, but a little animation character. And then you kind of break down everything like that. You have to go in such a radical direction that everybody forgets about BitBoy in a way that, it, you know, the, the value is so good that they stick around. The value these guys are pumping out is of smaller content creators that don't necessarily know what they're doing. And so you see it, you know, the views drastically come down over time. Like, can I even, do they even have their, uh, don't they have the projections on here anymore? The future video views, it's been hovering back down. Future subscribers, this one is kind of broken because it is still negative. It's still saying they're going to reach a little bit, but typically, no, it's, it's, it's so bad right now. It's, it's sad, but you know, uh, I don't know. It, it's so weird to see channels like this and how, what's happened in the crypto world. The crypto world is definitely um, volatile, just like the, you know, the, the currencies we talk about. Loki's the brand. 
Loki pretty much is a good part of the channel here. That's why I show him a lot in all my videos nowadays when I'm outside just chilling and relaxing. Um, he's, I don't know, he kind of anchors me down. Uh, remember, I don't, I, I, mean, I, I talk to people, I have acquaintances and whatnot. I don't really have many true friends. Um, as I was doing YouTube, as I kind of got sidetracked with like work and some of that, I lost a lot of them as they kind of moved outside the country. They moved to California, moved to New York and things like that. Uh, some moved to Florida or Texas, but eh, I never really wanted to move wa out of Washington for another place. I like Texas. I like California. I like uh, Florida. I like New York. Do I like them more than Washington? Not really, which is why I'm thinking of moving to Panama. Panama is much more interesting if you ask me. Um, but, you know, I, I've been much more enticed with a... Um, a cultural shift uh, because I don't see America really all like America's fun. It's good. There's a lot of good things about it, but I feel like if I can live a more prosperous life outside of America, I'm probably going to do that in a place that I like, you know, because it's not like I'm going to be renouncing my American citizenship. <laughs> That's something you should never do, but um, it's something where I'm like, Oh, I'll be abroad. I'll be having more fun. I'll be traveling and meeting new people, kind of having a new beginning, a little rebirth situation, probably. You know, just having a good time. When I go to Panama later on this year, I'm going to be doing some rum and cigar tastings, which is going to be pretty darn fun. And uh, never done one of those before, but I'm excited to try it out. NADK, damn, consecutive times without getting a notification? Dude, I, I know I've said this plenty of time, but I've given up on YouTube notifying you guys when I go live. It'll give you guys sometimes a little bit of a heads up, sometimes not. I don't know. It's it's something I've tried to, I've, I've just given up on. I've tried to email them and, you know, say, but it, I get like a robotic answer. YouTube support is not the best. So, um, I never really know what's going on. Here you go. You've been, you've been having a rough day apparently, haven't you? There you go. All right. Um. But yeah, there's no way to fix it as far as I'm concerned. That's why what I've trying to been do doing over the past few weeks is I've been trying to give you guys a few hours heads up saying, hey, I'm posting my stream here. Um, and that way YouTube will try to notify you over those couple hours before I set the stream up and when it goes live. So what I think I'm going to do to maybe fix this or try to fix a little bit better. For the Telegram group, I will tell you guys daily what time I plan to go. Every morning I will set the stream time to be around a specific time. My issue with it is if like, what if I have a stream set up for like six o'clock Pacific time, whatever. And then all of a sudden at three o'clock Pacific time, Bitcoin is crashing down, you know, uh, you know, and then, then all of a sudden I'm, I'm only live for that. Those like three hours up to the time I thought I was going to go early uh, live earlier. It's that type of stuff that truly annoys me, but I'm, I'm thinking it should be fine overall. Um, Cause I'm going to start doing some posts on it and stuff like that, but I don't think many people even see my posts. So again, there was a, there was a little bit of an issue there. Anyway, Walter, out of curiosity, we know you have ADHD. Same here. Do you take anything for it? I used to. I don't now. I think if you're younger and you're a kid and you find out you have ADHD in school, uh, while you're still in school, I would highly recommend taking medication. But if you are, if you have ADHD and you're an adult and your personality has been shipped, like formed around you having ADHD, I would say you should talk to your doctor about it and see if you really do need it or not. Uh, for me in trading in my life, I don't need it. Uh, it probably would make certain aspects of my life better, but it changes my personality to the degree that I don't like it. Uh, I don't turn into some violent, crazy asshole or something. I just turn into a more of a melatonin person and, you know, uh, breaking news. I'm already pretty melatonin. So it turns me into a very freaking melatonin person. Um, I would say lower dosages for longer periods of time have been much more of my thing. When I do go down the medication route, but it's usually for certain things only. Like I know something big is happening, so I need to be more alert and things like that. Um, I started doing ADHD a lot, a medication a lot more last year because my mom was really sick, and I knew I just had to pay more attention to her, and so I was taking the medication for that. Um, you know, since she passed away in October, um, I really haven't taken a single pill at all. Uh, I, I was already stopping taking them a little bit before she passed. Because I knew I was taking, you know, I was with her for like five, six hours a day at the, the nursing home and stuff. But 
I, I would say it's probably just something you have to feel out. There are people that like Adderall. It's kind of like a short spike type of thing. I'm much more of a person like I want to have a little bit more control throughout the day, but I don't want to have total control because when I have total control, um, I do everything but at the same time I'm doing nothing. Um, and so there's no balance in my brain when it comes to those types of medication like Adderall. I can't take it. It's too... My brain isn't wired to do it. Because I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I might have something else besides ADHD. They've tested me for stuff. They haven't found anything. But ADHD, I got severe ADHD. If you got mild ADHD, I think you're probably fine taking the medication. But severe ADHD, uh, I'm on a cycle, dude. Every day, I wake up. I take a shower. I take Loki outside to use the bathroom. I come back upstairs, brush my teeth, do my hair, uh, do my beard. <laughs> and then I will hop on my computer for a little bit. Um, once I have my computer, I have a choice. I will go straight to stock market charts or I will go straight to anime videos and I will watch an anime show or I will go over to YouTube and I'll watch the local, like the, the, not local, but I'll watch the, uh, CBS news, ABC news, Fox news, CNN news, anything out there. Um, and I'll just kind of, kind of soak some of that in there, you know, and then I'll look at charts or I'll go, I'll switch over to one of the two things. But throughout the day, I'm going to do one of three things. I'm going to do all three things. I'm going to be watching anime for probably two hours of the day. I'm going to be doing trading for about three hours of the day. I'm going to be looking at news for maybe about an hour of the day. All of those things happen. Then throughout the day, I'll also be taking Loki outside to go on a walk. We'll go play around a little bit. He'll be having a blast. Um, I'll have to grab lunch sometime during there. I don't really eat much because uh, I'm trying to lose weight. But, you know, uh, I have a problem where sometimes I don't eat enough. Right. And so right now I just bought like a shit ton of pills because my doctor was like, okay, well, if you're not eating a lot because you've been dieting and you're kind of like fasting yourself naturally, he's like, well, don't not take uh, uh, minerals and all the shit your body's supposed to have. So you know what I have? I have, I figured it out, because uh, it all got delivered over the past few days. Uh, Annie? No, Amazon is what I'm looking for here. All right, here we go. I got fish oil, probiotics, B-complex, fiber well gummies, calcium, uh, overall vitamins, vitamin D3, electrolyte tablets, iron, magnesium, and that that's it. I think I got some other stuff that's coming in the mail, but I forget what it is. And I got some tea and stuff like that to keep me going. But yeah, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird thing. Um, but... I'm okay with it. I have money to waste on all this shit. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, when I took my medication, I think I was only paying like a few bucks a, a month for ADHD medication with insurance. So it wasn't too much at all. If you don't have insurance, they give you these little RX cards, I think. Um, Cause I think the lady gave them to me on top of insurance. So it was like, oh, it's really cheap. Um, but yeah, it, it's fine. It's, you know, um, it's something you kind of have to decide. But if you feel like you can be more productive, AKA like, you know, make more money uh, while being on the medication, I would highly encourage it. When I was in corporate America, I probably should have been taking it, but I wasn't. Um, because corporate America, you kind of have to meet certain production standards. Um, luckily for me, most jobs that I have, they require me to talk and not do as much work. The most work I did in my last job was paperwork, like uh, writing a report, budgeting, asking for more money and showing the writing a chart analysis. Basically, if you give me this much money, I will give you these results. That That's basically what I was doing for a whole quarter. I gave the presentation. I got my maximum budget approved. And then from there, I started to execute the budget. Now, after that, COVID happened and I got laid off after I, I, I laid off like 150 people or something like that below me. And then they laid me off fucking dick move. But I was like, you know what? I don't care. That's one of the reasons I didn't go back to the company. But I take work home with me. I work all the time. Um, that's kind of one of the reasons I think I was able to do okay with YouTube because even though, again, my channel is making, um, I didn't make a transparency video for you guys one day. I promise you I would make a money. Like how do YouTubers make money? Uh, uh, how do crypto YouTubers make money? I still want to make that video. Um, but basically, you know, this channel probably brings in about $5,000 a month in total for me. Some, sometimes, uh, it kind of varies. <laughs> Uh, in a bear market, it might just be a two thousand dollars, maybe, maybe. Um, but you know, uh, I'll probably break all that down. But 
you know, just for me, you know, I tell you guys about Faradesk. They pay me $1,200 a month to sponsor. BYD5 pays me out a little bit, like maybe like $1,300, $1,400 a month, uh, you know, plus the commission stuff. Um, so, you know, they pay me for that. That's usually where the money comes from when it comes to YouTube. Um, that's why I want to make sure that I want to do that video so you guys can kind of see all the, the stuff behind it, which can be kind of nice. Um, but still, you know, like 3000 I can't really live off of that. It's, it's kind of, uh, maybe that sounds a little first worldish. Um, you know, with taking care of Loki, uh, helping my sister through college, sister's cat, uh, upstairs, uh, medical stuff. Uh, well, I guess I don't really do much medical stuff, but you know, day-to-day -day life stuff, it's, it's cost a pretty penny. Another reason why I still want to live in, uh, Panama, because I know I can afford that a lot easier than over here. A lot more. Heck, when I go up to Seattle, I Uber back down to my house. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't take the train back down because the train's not operating at the time. So it costs me like $130 for a night out downtown Seattle. It's insane. But I pay for it all the same because I don't want to pay the $10,000 fee for drunk driving. My uncle just got drunk drivers, uh, DUI, I think last year. He has a little thing where you turn on your car, oh, <laughs> got to breathe into it. <laughs> I don't want to be that. Uh, that just seems freaking horrible. I try to stay out of line of the uh, the government as much as possible. The most the government sees in me is when I'm ripping on uh, Gary Gensler on, tw on Twitter. That's about it. Ooh, that's a good flavor right there. Uh, BitBoy was our crazy crypto uncle and they got rid of him. I mean, he still has a channel. I, I think he's downsizing his channel because he realized that you don't have to have a full on staff in order to have a successful YouTube channel. Um, I think he just did a video where he was crying all over the place. I, I swear I saw a video of him crying all over the place. Um, Ben Armstrong YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one. I'm retiring from crypto YouTube. And then, you know, boom. Post, post, video, video, video. But this video right here made sure his next video got a lot of stuff too. It's a very weird thing. It's a very weird thing. Um, but yeah, he is, he is, he's kind of crazy, you know? Um, I've met him before. I met him at a FinTech conference of all things. Um, back in the day, he used to try to go around a lot, but I don't think he has the credibility to do these types of deals anymore because of, you know, like he left his wife and his kid for some side piece. That's not the... Um, seemly thing to do if you're gonna go down that road I, I'm single by the way with no kids but if you're gonna go down that road like it has to be like a complete understanding type of thing going on here and if you can't be hiding that shit especially with a kid oh my god but yeah weird stuff for sure I put 42,646 on my chart a couple years ago the level is still very important served as a support and resistance line for a while we definitely have been bouncing around it for quite a bit of time here over the past, what, five, six weeks now. Um, I am kind of happy of how Bitcoin's been able to hold up, I would say, um, after this Bitcoin spot ETF news. It's just been that we're kind of, we're trying to make new lows and I don't like that at all because it seems like the newer lows are trying to win out here. What's the secret to Panama? What's the crypto climate? Um, the crypto climate is fine. I wouldn't say it's necessarily like crazy good or crazy bad or anything like that. It's fine. Um, for me, when it comes to Panama, I, I've wanted to move out of the U.S. for a while and just kind of go exploring the world a little bit. Um, I couldn't because I was taking care of my mom and you know, number one important thing, right? Um, so. Oh, look, he's chewing on a toy. That's fine. I was wondering what toy he was chewing on until I heard the, the specific crunches of it. Um, and so now, you know, now I have an opportunity to kind of go out. I'm still waiting a year before I go out there because I have to wait for my sister to get out of college, um, her freshman year of college. That way she can have her own apartment and stuff like that set up. But when it comes to Panama, it's, it's fairly cheap. I showed you guys those apartment views here a few minutes ago. Um, you know, here's a $1,900 apartment. That's also about 2,900 square feet, three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, uh, two parking spots, which ugh, I'm not going to have a car down there probably for a while. Um, but everything's furnished is very nice. If I go on the cheaper side here, like I was looking at cheaper places if I didn't want to have a cleaning lady. Um, 
<coughs> I'm gonna want to have a cleaning lady. But let's say I want to just have a two bedroom place. If I can drag this over. Okay, maybe not. Drag there you go. Okay, two bedrooms. That's three bedroom one, two bedroom. That's two bedrooms, one for five bathrooms. Here's right here. Here's another loft, Punta Pacifica. This is kind of the wealthier neighborhood, if you ask me. Um, you know, nice place to live. Nothing too crazy there. The lady that cleans my place would go out, buy all my groceries, do everything I need. So I would never go grocery shopping, never doing that type of stuff. Um, but everything would always be nice and clean. I could work on my computer and I'd be living my best life. Every night I'd be going out for dinner, maybe. Well, every other day I'd be going out for a nice meal. Uh, the lady could cook whatever food she wants. Because um, I guess there's different styles of uh, ladies that come over. Like some people would eat their own food or some people would eat the food that they make me. Um, I would tell them that they could eat the same food I eat, but they can also just get a budget for themselves to eat because maybe they don't want to have Americanized food. Maybe they're just like, Ugh, that stuff is disgusting, you know? So it's stuff like that where I'm like, ah, yeah, you, you can do what you want. But I'm going to be pretty liberal when it comes to that type of stuff. I'm not going to be some hard, hard-ass uh, boss. Because, um, heck, I'm not, you know, I'm paying like somebody like 500 bucks a month, 400 bucks a month, you know? That's not necessary. Oh, it's a lot. I guess down there, but not necessarily a lot from what I'm accustomed to, right? Uh, my house cleaning lady, the last one I had was like 75 bucks an hour, right? So that's like five hours covers what this lady would work in a whole month. Uh, plus, she's like living there and stuff like that. But at least apparently they, they like doing the live-in method because they're allowed to save because they're not, I'm not charging them for rent, obviously. They have their own bathroom and stuff like that. And they're also living in a very high-end apartment complex, which, you know, if you're not, if you're like you're a cashier or something, you're not going back to the a $2,000 condo to go to sleep, of course. But uh, it's a very lovely place. Good food, good culture, lots of videos about it. I highly recommend, you know, you don't have to move down there, but it's, it's always fun to learn about other cultures and stuff like that. I'd say you can schedule a stream like early in the morning or something. That would be the best for me. I always check in the morning if there's a stream coming up. I'll, I'll definitely do that then. I'll do that. Uh, I... It'll be when I wake up, so it might be anywhere from like five o'clock in the morning to like ten o'clock in the morning. And it'll be a swing. It'll be a swing for sure. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I, I rarely stream in the morning. Nobody ever. Nobody's really up in the morning to watch me stream. Um, I would work sixty uh, plus hours for less than twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, there was a lot of people that definitely do that right there, right? Actually, it was more like eighty. Oh my gosh, that's like my first job when I was working in college. My first job paid me like eight bucks an hour. It was horrible. Because it was like eight bucks an hour with American prices, ah, uh, it was uh, it was rough. Is it, it, this is definitely a fifteen minute time frame right here? Mm -hmm. We're just watching Bitcoin do some sideways action here. I see you. Why are you grunting at me? I see you. Yeah, I see you. Being okay. Are you sad because your eye got scratched by the cat? Yeah, that means you got to stop going after the cat. Yeah. Them and the, the cat and uh, Loki have such a testy relationship. Like if they're both tired, they will cuddle together. If they both see each other and Loki is polite, they can do a little nose to nose kiss, right? But if Loki's too active and he's too excited, he runs over to the cat to go say hi. The cat will like be sweat, and so he has to learn how to not run to the cat to say hi, like he would run to any other dog. Because he grew up with the cat, so the cat used to play with him a lot more. But since Loki got too big, the cat doesn't like to play with him all the time now. Yeah, that's okay. You're a good boy. And hey guys, please don't take it the wrong way. Uh, are willing to pay much? Yeah, so uh, the reason they're willing to pay, I would say is, let me tap this down here a little bit. Make sure this is still it. Really, I have an ace in the hole because I'm smarter than other YouTubers. No, I'm joking. Um, I, I have those four 24-hour uh, streams and those things garner over 100,000 views a month. So they're really, really good. So, uh, let me see if I can show you this. Can I show you this? Will it, will it actually show up? You gotta stop grunting. Oop. Hold on. Where is it at? No, this isn't showing all the views. It's probably because I have all the streams on here. All right, but I have those four 24 hour streams and they're getting like a few thousand views every day, five, 6,000 views, some of them every day. Uh, sometimes they go lower. It kind of depends on how the market's going. I think right now it's actually pretty low compared to what they normally are at. But 
they want to have their links on those. And um, when you have been doing crypto for as long as I have, you kind of build up these relationships. Because again, I'm, I'm a networker. I'm a marketing guy. I, I know how to talk to people. One thing that's been kind of um, shown, I guess, through my data is the, uh, I have high net worth lurkers in my streams. And for whatever reason, I don't know who they are. Maybe the only one I know is Secret Fish. Only one I know is Secret Fish. Um, I don't know who he, the person actually is, but Secret Fish, if he's donating 500 bucks every now and again, he, you know, he, he has the, the moolah, so to speak. And, uh, you know, he's the one that helped me get the, the four 24 hour uh, streams going. Um, so there's money uh, that watches me. So they're hoping that that money will flow over to, um, the money will flow over to their exchange and then they'll be able to make money as people trade and do the fees and stuff like that. So, uh, uh you can see a lot of uh, influencers out there really, uh, The average influence of their audience is usually somebody that's very new to crypto and somebody who really doesn't understand a lot. So when they first hop on an exchange, they go crazy with trading and they lose everything. Think of what happened when they do options on Robinhood, you just lose everything really fast. I tend to walk my people on a little bit better. So they don't necessarily, they still could lose everything at the time if they make one really bad trade, but they usually last a little bit longer on top of it. So the, 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 the value is worth more because they're making money the exchange is making money off the fees and I'm making money off the commissions. So like everybody kind of wins. If you don't have the right audience and you, you don't have, uh, I have records over the years of my audience and how they trade. Basically, um, they know that they can make money off of you guys longer because you guys don't throw, you guys, you guys don't like blow up your accounts basically. Like here, let me show you something. Okay, I probably can't show it to you there. Let me see if I can figure this out. Hold on a second. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, did it not go through? Give me a second. Give me a second. Let's look at it first. So, I'll get this email basically. We have, congratulations, we have sent $240 USD to my wallet. They'll pay me that every Thursday. Um, now, normally it's 300 bucks, it makes you go up to $1,200, but since there's five Thursdays this month in the month of January, February, uh, I think it was five. They moved that to 240, so it just splits it up over five payments. But yeah, um, you guys don't blow up all your money. So it allows me to put more forward a better negotiation tactic. Um, it's more of me knowing what they're looking for and not so much that I have a massive audience. Think of you guys being superior to the average person that watches another YouTuber. Um, and I can, I can show that to them with data because I'm a data guy. Um, heck, remember I told you I read all those reports. I give budgets like, hey, if you give me this, I can give you this. It kind of goes to that same point. Um, so yeah, it works out pretty well. But yeah, it's, uh, you're not going to find many other YouTubers with my size audience getting the same amount of money. Uh, that's definitely for sure. However... I've sacrificed a lot of views in order to do that. Like, um, if I did pump and do a lot more crazy things, I'm pretty sure I can get a lot more money in overall, and I might even make more money from them overall. But I like being a higher value person and having a better community around me. And that's not to say everybody goes full time or something like that. Uh, but some of you guys over the years, uh, uh, maybe like 10 up to now, have gone into full-time traders. I think only two of you guys have quit your jobs. The rest of you guys are like, I like my benefits, so I'm going to have this cool supplemental income. And imagine you have your salary and you times it by two. Um, 
you know, and, and then you're like, you know, you can do whatever with you want. But again, it's a, it's a different type of system that I have my, I, I, I set myself. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but I hope that kind of explains it. You guys are more higher, higher net worth or something like that. If that makes sense, uh, not net worth. You guys just higher value. You guys don't blow up your accounts. You guys, you know, remember when somebody usually asks me like, Hey, what can you do to start off? I don't say, Hey, go run and go trade. I go say, go paper trade. All these, all these exchanges have paper trading accounts. Go practice. You know, there's no rush. The market's going to always be there. Uh, and by doing that, I think people just, they still, I think they actually still move money into the account. They try to trade a little bit, but I think they're doing a little bit better and they're able to last longer. And thereby, if they're making money for longer, the exchange is making more money because they're out of trade off of them and everything kind of works it that way. But again, the, the exchanges don't want you guys to lose money because that means they, they run out of fee money basically. Uh, and so that's kind of the whole gist. There has to be like a good partnership there where everybody's happy. A lot of times what you see is somebody, a new YouTuber will be promoted by an exchange. And then within a month, that exchange has been taken off their website. Something else is completely different. Uh, remember, the last exchange that I worked with before Fairdesk and BY DeFi was BitGit. The only reason that BitGit uh, was really taken off of my channel wasn't because I was like, oh, they're not paying me enough or, oh, you guys are not, um, uh, you know, doing a good job of making money. It was because they're no longer available in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something like that. Hey, Ty. Yeah, those are going to be capital gains. I know they have a nice banking system, but it's not going to be as much as up here. I'll tell you that now. And thanks, Ave. I appreciate it. Hey, Knucklebuster Zeta. I don't know much about Zeta. Let's see. Zeta. Is it Zeta or Zeta? Uh, Yeah, it's okay. Uh, this is a one hour chart. I might have to go to buy bit. Is there more? Okay, there we go. Okay. So it's trying to have a breakout right now. It's actually not looking too bad. Now it would have been nicer to buy, you know, buy over here during the consolidation period or during the breakout right here. Let's go to the daily chart. You're probably looking at maybe one or two more days of this pump here. I don't know the market cap, but if this continues, normally we have a second peak right here and then we come back down to reverse consolidate. Then later on, and of course in the month or a quarter, you'll see that breakout happening. Let me go over here to the 15 minute chart though, just to see what I can find because it looks like it's just pumping up right now. Yeah, it's probably looking to get back up here between 158 and 161. So you got a little bit left of uh, a little bit more of a run in here. If Bitcoin can turn around later on today, like I, like we were just talking about, then you could possibly see getting back up here to maybe 170 or something like that. But if you're already in this, you're going to start scaling out probably around 155, which is already below this 159 price, just to make sure in case it doesn't continue taking off. But maybe 155, 160. 162 is maybe where you can scale it again. I would probably say if you're doing 160, you don't have to do 162. And then from there, just move up the stop loss and then wait to see if it actually can go up higher towards 170, 180, those types of crazier levels up here. Typically, it doesn't work out that way, but you know, it looks like it was just put on Binance. And because it has access to that capital now, you may see more buyers coming in. So, you know, I, I would say it's worth a shot. Uh, be careful if you're trying to chase into it and buy now. But if you're already in it, I would say it's in a good spot right now. You don't even have to necessarily move up your stop loss all too much. You know, if you bought around here with a change of character, your stop loss is probably either going to be 138 or 132. If it's at 138 right now, I think you could possibly move it up here to 144. But besides that, I don't even think you have to move it anywhere close to where it is now. Just try to take some of those profits as they show up and hope that the moves can continue going on. I understand that Bitcoin is also at a level of support. So if Bitcoin takes a sudden drop because shorts just kind of go heavy on it, you'll see this come down as well. But that's what the stop loss is there for to kind of help you out. This is the five minute chart. Look at this one minute chart now. It's still zooming quite well. Uh, yeah, it's still popping off. I don't know exactly what's going on, but you're right. It's, it's definitely worth watching here.
to let's go with the typical uh, not ironing it all too much bit yeah, a little bit of resistance around 150s and so 155, but again, we talked about 155, 160, 170, 180. You can probably skip the 165, honestly, or the one, or the 158, I think it was. No, the 162, excuse me. Um, there's nothing back that went lower, right? No, no, so you're probably fine here. It was making some choppy moves, but yeah, it's had a clear breakout. You're looking pretty good. Um, Maybe not the best time to be buying, but if you're trying to just, you know, t take some profits, you're in a good spot for it right now. And also Bitcoin's trying to have a short-term turnaround here. Again, hitting, uh, well, we, are, we actually haven't hit the order block yet. Bitcoin's kind of in this weird spot like we talked about before with these death crosses, golden crosses all happening. Wait until we hit that support level, that'll be interesting. And again, if you guys are in much more bullish camp, if we get a chance for a breakout, that could be something very good for Bitcoin. Uh, I'm just afraid that if we break out here because with everything kind of being bearish It may break out and go sideways and then just get choppy again. Uh, that's my uh, Not my worst case scenario, but that's the scenario that I think would most likely play out if we did break out That's why I'm hoping that we can have a big boom here in either direction just to get the the, 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 the train moving the juice is moving We're not really looking at some crazy things happening these days, which kind of sucks. We're just kind of in this sideways action What's it here? Oh, I stay on whatever. Yeah, what do you call um capital gains tax? It sucks. I know it does, but um honestly, for the life that trading gives you, I I think it's just fine. Um, I think if once you guys made it to becoming traders and you guys make some find a way to make consistent profits, and again, I'm not talking about hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. I'm talking about an extra ten thousand dollars a year, an extra fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, whatever. Um. It really becomes easier just to live your day-by-day -day life. The issue is, which what I what I found from my friends who have kind of made a little bit more money trading out there. As they make more money, they start spending more money. Then their money problems just persist. Because if you have a bad month in trading, you're still going to have to pay all those heavy bills that you have. That's why I typically don't have a crazy lifestyle. I have a... 2013 Ford Fusion car. It's 10 years old. 10 years old. Uh, I I have been thinking about buying another car, but frankly, this car has not broken down yet because <laughs> I treat it so <laughs> so well. Um, so I'm waiting for it to break down. But now I'm moving to Panama. You know, I might just lease a car when I get down there. Maybe I'll just do Uber payments. I'm not entirely sure, honestly. Um, I think I'll probably lease a car for like three hundred dollars a month and just call it a, call it a day, um, you know, for maybe twenty four months and really a little bit more expensive. But I'll see um, if I'm still over here. I might be able to buy a car for my grandmother, but uh, it's gonna be more expensive because my grandparents have, you know, when, once you've retired, you can kind of spend your money however you want to. They have like an uh, they have two Acuras, like an Acura SUV, a very luxurious Acura car. And then my grandmother drives a lovely Mercedes uh, with all the bells and whistles. I, I can't, I don't even understand modern cars all too much. Um, you know, my car, the fancy thing is it has the nice audio and it has like LED lights built into the car by the manufacturer, which is really nice. But um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's hard to not spend more money when you see it coming in. Uh, I, I like to save money. That's my personal thing though, because you guys know I grew up pretty poor. Uh, Growing up poor is not a necessarily a fun thing. So you're kind of more afraid of losing your money and going back to being in that situation. So, you know, I spend money. Don't get me wrong. I spend quite a bit of money sometimes when I go on, vac <laughs> on vacations. Uh, like I'm going first class to uh, Panama here. Um, but I, I don't flinch and I don't bat an eye when I do that because I'm not spending a lot of money every day. I think this week I probably spent... In total, with everything, not including like rent and stuff, three hundred dollars, right? Um, 
No, there are wigs that I'll punch that up to seven hundred dollars. You know, uh, take take somebody out to dinner that can go up really high. Uh, you know, you have to be driving around Seattle, Ubering back down to Tacoma that can go pretty high. But I don't go out and eat every weekend. I don't. I don't even eat out that much right now. Uh, Uber Eats has been my thing. So I, I ate Uber Eats twice yesterday. That was a uh, no, twice last week. That was like sixty bucks at Uber Eats for two meals. Um, so don't do that. That's a horrible way to spend money. A viewer's mindset determines what channel they watch. Yeah, but I mean, I encourage you guys to watch a lot of other YouTubers out there. Um, I might not agree with how they talk and stuff like that, but I just want you guys to have different viewpoints. Because there are times, like that last drop that I was talking about, I saw a drop coming. But just like what happened the last few times I saw it, we had this crazy big pop back up, right? Where we just came out back up out of nowhere. And that's been struggling with me, and I've been f pretty frank about it because it, it fucking irritates me. Uh, I hate being wrong, of course. But, like, you know, I want you guys to have other viewpoints so you guys can make an overall well-informed decision. I know that sometimes, because I say that, you guys go off and find somebody who talks a whole bunch of shit and nonsense. Um, but you know what? It, it, it is what it is. Um, and that's why I'm hoping that uh, eventually I want to be doing more live trading with you guys. Um, and I've done a few of them over the, over the last few months, but I don't trade unless I see something. And I normally am not doing day trading. I'm trading off of the one hour, the four hour and the daily charts. So if I buy at one point, we're not going to really know what happened until later on at night, the midnight, maybe early morning, maybe, you know, a whole day or something. So it, it usually takes some time and that's not something I can technically do while streaming. Maybe the setup and give you guys my thought process there, but really, you know, it's it's, it's kind of difficult to to have a trade ready when you're ready when you when you want to trade. Hey, Marla, I've not looked at book maps before. I have not fake it on Bitcoin fifteen minute. I mean, this is the four hour chart right here that we're looking at. You can see it's kind of going more sideways. We're trying to have this consolidation right now. What we're dealing with right now is one of two things with Bitcoin. We're either going to see Bitcoin pop back up above like 43,200 or so and have a pretty strong move over the next couple of hours. Um, or we're going to see Bitcoin struggle for these next couple of hours and then eventually come back down pretty hard and then make a new low, taking us back down to maybe 42,000 even ish, right? Um, because it's going to take a lot to get us back above that 50, but we have an opportunity here. The 15 minute chart, we're trying, we're, we're dealing with it a little bit. We have these lower highs working out. We have this order block. If you want to see another surge happening at this point, you're going to have to see the price break back above this order block. And then that'll give you the opportunity for Bitcoin to go a little bit higher. Even if Bitcoin goes higher here, it's still just going to make it into a more wild range because we have all these levels of resistance. And again, it's going to take something of a surge to have us break out above it. At best, at best right now, I think the surge would be something like this. Surge up. That surge is not going to be like 5,000 points, surge 1,000 points. It's going to be a surge up, consolidation, and then later on tomorrow, perhaps, or maybe early tomorrow morning, maybe, you know, when the market opens up, we can have that move going up higher. Um, but right now, we're still dealing with that drop, and we're just trying to get out of it. Uh, it doesn't look good at this point in time, but, there, but there's still an opportunity, I would say, if we can hold on till tomorrow morning when the markets open back up, because... The stock markets have been just churning and churning and churning. That should give an opportunity for a lot of other things to pop. I'm still bearish over the next few weeks, but the way we get there has not been easy over the past few, um, uh, well, past month and a half for me. Because, you know, I'd say we're going down, but yeah, sure, we go down, but then we have these crazy moves, and I just get like, okay, well, I made profit, but not nearly as much profit as I wanted to, and I don't like when those types of moves happen. Like right here? If we just forget all the oscillators, figure out how everything's kind of going more neutral right now. We're kind of in this spot where over the next day or two, we're going to know if we're coming down back below 42,000 or if we're going to find a way to make our way back above 44,000. One of those two things is going to happen. It's going to be pretty fun when it does, but even if we make our way back up, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a little bit more interesting. I would say I'd rather have us break back up just so I have a better opportunity to short into the market. But um, that weekly chart is starting to concern me as everything is pointing down, down, down. Uh, MACD is not down yet, but it'll be getting down there pretty soon. So, you know, 
we're building a little bit by bit. I'll, I'll take it as we, you know, I'll take it as we can't go. Um, again, this is more of an opportunity for dollar cost averaging, not necessarily like really crazy trades going on. Um, there was a scalping play, I guess, from the you know, buy, 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 just at the buy zone right here. You can probably play that up here to the resistance, but after that, uh, you know, that's a that's a that's a short term scalp right there. Not really worth my time. And hey, Kilo, uh, trust me, I know that sticky heat can be a, a, a bastard. I know I'm going to get a, a dehumidifier for, you know, the actual apartment and stuff. But I, <laughs> I'm going to be going through t-shirts while I adjust. Like a t-shirt every six hours or something from outside for a while. I'm going to just be bringing a little backpack. Not even backpack, yeah, just a little backpack. Just take off shirt, put it back on there. I'll be good to go. Loki's going to have to adapt to it a little bit, that's for sure. I, I talked to the doctor and says, oh yeah, German Shepherds can adapt to it. And luckily, Loki's a short-haired German Shepherd, so he's not going to really overheat too much. But he's like, as always, you know, if, if he was living in the South or something, lots of water, make sure you're checking on him all the time. You know, just be a responsible owner. And I was like, okay, good enough, you know. My doctor loves me because of how good I treat Loki. He's like, oh, look at that coat. Look at his teeth. You let him chew on stuff, don't you? And I was like, yeah, you know, he chews on a wood. So he's like, yeah, get good quality teeth. Um, stuff like that. But uh, I haven't been to Cologne yet. That seems pretty nice. How do I feel about China's recent liquidation of assets being tied into Tether? I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that. Um, mostly, it, you know, mostly when it comes to China, I think of the Evergrande thing going on. China is in such a weird spot that if America starts to teeter, China goes kabloof and just goes into full on like economic depression, in my opinion. I hear you. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, so I'm kind of concerned about that myself. Um, I don't think it'll have a huge impact in the long run. But if things get bad in America, things are going to get really bad across the world really fast. China surprisingly just hasn't had a good recovery coming out of COVID. Uh, kind of some self-inflicted wounds, if you ask me. They were so crazy about their lockdowns, but... I just hope they don't do anything um, irrational. I think they're just very in a, they're in a very defensive posture right now because America is what are the, what's the phrase we're using right now? We're decoupling from China and we're trying to send some business down to India. But you know, India doesn't really like America. Like, oh, come over and hug us, brother. They're like, okay, we will do business with you guys, and but we want to see a profit because you see these types of crunches out there. They have a history of being like you know abused, right? Excuse me, England. Uh, they definitely took some uh, took some shit out of India. <laughs> India, um, England, the West. We definitely took some shit out of China. Um, so they. What's the matter? Okay, but yeah. So th there is definitely some stuff going on over there. Yeah, no worries, Uncle Buster. Happy to help you out. Hi, Mike. Bonk is rebounding after a flash crash. How do you think it will go? Uh. I own some bonk, not much of it. Let me see. Oh, it definitely did have that dump. It was probably because there was a level of support here, wasn't there? Oh, whoa, yeah, look at that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, if Bitcoin could hold here and have a move back up, I would say you should probably try to scale out kind of close to the, the 20 moving average in the four hour chart. I was looking at this earlier with the one hour chart and I was hoping that we might have a golden cross until I saw what happened over here. We did have a golden cross and nothing really panned out. So. Honestly, I was hoping back when I was looking at this, though, I was hoping that we might actually hold the support level, try to make a double bottom and have a really nice, woo, you know, pop up later on. Um, I'm kind of scared it won't break back above these order blocks up here. It's around like point five zeros and one zero two nine six ish level. Um, you do see a little bit of optimism here on the 15 minute chart. What's the one hour chart, the two hour chart, not good. The four hour chart, not good. Daily chart, still kind of sticking. The daily chart gives me hope that we can actually start coming back up here towards 11.044. If I were to add a couple days, maybe around another six, 7% from where we are now. After that, I'm not entirely sure. 
it kind of re it requires Bitcoin to be making a move back above forty thousand, uh, forty four thousand dollars. Excuse me. Everything's still bearish here. Nothing's really caught back up. But if you're trying to catch a potential bottom, now is the time to buy bonk. That's the time to buy bonk. And then from there, you can try to see it move. You are seeing obviously some lower highs here. That's the concern. So you know down here, maybe a little bit higher. That's probably going to be your next lower high, and then we could probably consolidate again. And then you have another opportunity to break down here or make another move on the higher end. I'd probably say about six to eight percent higher than where you are right now. And then your stop loss really isn't going to be too crazy. Your stop loss is probably just going to be either here if you want to be a little more risky, right? The lower end on the 15 minute chart, or you can move it up right here. For me, I'm much more inclined to leave it right here in the middle. I think that's fine. Um, because you just don't know exactly if it's going to be able to continue pumping up here because Bitcoin at the same time is playing some games in and of itself. Bitcoin still has to try to break through its order block. If everything's breaking out, you should be fine. I don't think it'll break out immediately. It would probably break out sometime over the next two hours. I found your high income watcher. <laughs> I'm down for Bitcoin to come down. I'm just buying more. Exactly. That's the process you guys have to have right now, though, is if Bitcoin comes down, altcoins come down, your job is to um, uh, buy more, not not necessarily buy less. You want to buy more. Um, oh, hold on one second. I'm supposed to. A friend gave me this cigar, so I'm going to take a picture of it while I. Um, there you go. Um. But yeah, you're just using these dips as opportunities to buy right now. Biscuits for Bitcoin, that's pretty nice. China is a good investment once it's the bottom, but what's the bottom? Dollar costing average China is probably the best way to go. But I'm still of the case, I think America's going to have an economic slowdown here pretty soon. And that slowdown is going to be where China gets hit the hardest. Uh, and I'll be just dollar cost average of that. I'm not... China small caps is not where I'd be right now. I'd be in China mega caps and just dollar cost averaging those. Um, luckily for China, they own a lot of American debt. Um, so as, you know, they, they'll be fine in the long term. But a lot of their companies are going to be going through some struggles. Um, they're probably going to be taken over by the government at some point if they have a lot of issues and it'll just be a, it'll be a shit show for a while. But again, it's, it's a timing issue. We, we don't know exactly when that's going to come. So there's not really much you can do except for just have a plan of once things really do, hit, like when shit hits the fan, execute the plan as you kind of dollar cost average into it. You're not going to hit the bottom, but you know, if you, if you have a big crash day, toss some of your dollar cost averaging money in there. If you have another big crash day after that buy a little bit more and then kind of let it sit around and fester for a little bit see what you like and if it eventually starts coming back up and you see some good economic data fine but we can't always trust chinese economic data so it just becomes that much harder this is where i would say you know check into check into cnbc or fox business and just you know google cnbc tv china and see what they're talking about uh they're not always going to be 100 percent accurate but they'll have more information than you and that's about as good as i can, I can say right there Hey, no worries, Max Power. Always happy to help you out. Thank you for always being a member here, dude. All right. Hey, Ty, I'm praying everything comes down. Uh, there's a lot of people hoping it comes down so we can get better uh, opportunities to buy in. But okay, buddy, I'm going to um, call it a night. I got to go uh, take a look at outside. I think he has to use a bathroom. That's what he's been grunting about this entire time. You can't see him, but he's 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 right here uh, looking at me all menacingly like, dude, let me go outside. So it's been a couple good, it's been a good two and a half hours with you guys. I do appreciate a lot or two hours with you guys. I started at six 30. I think. Yes. So a good two hours and 10 minutes, something like that. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another cool two hour stream. And I'll probably take a, take a, take Tuesday off unless we're having a pretty big move and I'll do another two hour stream on Wednesday, another two hour on Thursday, another two on Friday. I'm thinking of doing two hours, five times a week and maybe six times a week. But I'm not entirely sure. It really just depends on what I'm doing throughout the day. But I, I personally do enjoy these later night streams for myself. I'm much more relaxed. I'm not worried about all the stuff I could be doing right now. Because if I wanted to do it, everything would be closed, basically. So I like the way that stuff is going. But anyway, 
I enjoyed hanging out with you guys tonight. I enjoyed smoking this nice little cigar right here with you guys. Uh, I'm going to go take a look outside, go check on his eyes since he got scratched by the cat. And then um, I'm going to, oh yeah, I got to go eat dinner. Huh. And 